Remember Adam said that we need a dingo. Howdy, <laughs> everyone, <laughs> and welcome uh, to the Praise the Pickle podcast. Yeah. Woo. That's right, you heard that little voice coming from your left ear. Yeah, here he is. Here it is, he's back. Charlotte's balls have Char- dropped. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Sorry. <laughs> Mr. Daniel Frickin. What's what's hey in boys. the house? Dan, hey. introduce yourself. Hello, I am Daniel Watts, and I am in the house. <laughs> <laughs> he said it how it is. A new house to be that said. Is yeah. true. Yes, I have been very busy moving house. Apologies for not making it last week, but Charlotte did a stellar job, I must say. Yeah, smashed it. Yeah. Definitely. Um. All right, and then we also have the slightly less impressive. Kevin Hart from your right eardrum. Hello, Kevin. So I, I didn't want to respond to that because I'm slightly <laughs> <laughs> less impressive, apparently. That so. was yeah, so. an intentional dramatic silence, everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, well, 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 I didn't, I didn't. Like, if I respond, then that means I am accepting. I am less impressed. Oh, so you were just making it seem like I was talking respond. to the other Kevin Hart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. Introduce yourself, Kev. Oh, um, I am the slightly less impressive Kevin Hart. <laughs> um, <laughs> there is a more impressive Kevin Hart somewhere in the world. There is. Uh, but yeah, hello. hello. I hope everyone's had a good week. Yeah, and I, and that's my bit, Kev. Stay out of it, all right? <laughs> all right. And my name, I am your host. I am the... Uh, the... The... Uh, I'm trying to think of a host of like a game show. Um, uh, Bruce Forsyth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him for years. <laughs> anyway, I am the host, the Bob main Ross. one, like the the big boy. You know, the one who makes sure everything happens. Me, if you say so, Mister Benjamin Watts. Woo! Woo! Round of applause, everyone. And yeah, so. I hope you've all had an absolutely stellar week. That was my word. You stole it. I did. Um, that's my. That's now my word of the month. So thank you for that. <laughs> oh, Can't do that. I prefer the other <laughs> one you had. Um, yeah. So this is the Pro to Pickle podcast. This is the place where we talk about video games, and this is the place where we just have fun all day and every day. And the place to be every Monday. Place to be every Monday. Or if you can't make it on a Monday, we'll allow you in on a Tuesday. But after that, it's not acceptable. Um, <laughs> if you make it on Monday and Tuesday, it's a £10 gift voucher. No, no, no. $10. $10. $10. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, I thought I was up in the price. No, 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 no. no. Sorry, not yet. Um, I've purposely been not talking about the $10 gift cards, just in case we suddenly get like a massive audience and then people start asking me for the $10 <laughs> gift cards. Um, <laughs> anyway, yes, so we're going to talk about some video games. So the first section in our wonderful, amazing structure is the introduction, which I've already just done. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really wow. good at this hosting thing. Okay. Um, and the next bit is... Kevin's blunders. Yay, it's my favourite. Well, you said there wasn't any. He didn't make any blunders last week, so you know what the, the funny thing is. I'm sure right, there was... Is that I, you know, we renamed it Kevin's blunders, and the second I renamed it that, Kevin has not made any blunders since. Well, he he did no, think, well, think you were talking I... about playing a game where you played as a kitchen. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> He was like, wait, 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 what? No, actually, so you play as actually, a kitchen? <laughs> no. I, 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 I re-listened to that, yeah, so and when that moment came up, you said the word, you play like a kitchen, because you used the word like when you didn't... It, what, you put it in in the wrong context, because, you know, sometimes you, 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 people say, like, they're like, like this, like that. Everyone always says like all the time. You said you play like a kitchen, and I thought, 
You play like a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> How does that work? Okay. I'm sure I don't was, remember that. I'm um, sure there was I'm some gonna, logic in there somewhere. I'm Maybe. gonna look that up and um You have to go back and look at it. Oh, listen, listen to, to it, it again. I, I remember it came up. Well you'd better find it. You just you, it's a bit where you talk about overcooked, so Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. Um that brings me on to the next section, which is Daniel. Hello. You. That's the next section. Yeah, no, it's literally called Daniel. <laughs> um, yeah, you you weren't here last week, no. so so you have homework, right? You had homework, which was to listen to the podcast and give some feedback. I never so do you've my already homework. mentioned. Well, that's well, you have to you have to listen to it now live on show then and give us your live response. Okay. Um, so, what did you think of the show last week, Mister Daniel? Uh, in all honesty, I I thought it was really really good. I think you guys did amazing. Um, Charlotte, considering it was her first podcast as well, did a really, really good job. And she just has like a natural voice for it, I think. Um, oh, she does have a nice voice, doesn't she? We we just sound like freaking garbage, man. And then she talks and you're like, oh man, why can't we all sound like that? <laughs> you uh, you clearly did loads of post-production on her voice, right? To get the levels right. And Yeah, I did like yeah, a million yeah, compressors yeah, on I it. Thought yeah. so, I thought so. Um, yeah, I mean, there were a few bits that I thought were pretty good. Um, well, for a start, you used the wrong jingle at the start. You used like a, an yeah, you did. I know. I of it. I, blunders, I know. blunder. I know. So I was. I, was I, by that. I I didn't have the other one right, and you had no internet, and I just didn't want to deal with it. And that one sounded fine, so I just I just stuck that one on. Um, I mean, and plus, we 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 okay. wanted to get we wanted to get your voice in there somewhere, and in that version, <laughs> you're at the end going. Put a clip that up and make it. Yeah, that one. Yay! Had a cameo. Yeah, cameo <laughs> appearance from Dan. Uh, I loved I loved Charlotte reminding me of um, playing The Sims back in the day and just finding the horrific ways to torture your family or city of people. Hell yeah. Um, that was really quite nostalgic when she was talking about drowning people and deleting the doors and windows <laughs> of the kitchen. And that kind of thing. <laughs> Is that, that's like all anyone ever does on Sims, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, yeah. You see, you yeah. see, if you can abuse your child enough to have the child protective services come over and then lock the child protective services lady in the room <laughs> with the child and just have a twenty four seven babysitter without. Yeah. The, the, this is your existence now. Yeah. <laughs> you signed up for this. Um, that was nice to hear about. Uh, Kevin, uh, you're not allowed to steal my Portal 2 partner because I'm dying to play that game and I need someone like to it. play it with. So I'm sorry, Ben. We're playing that. Kevin, <laughs> <laughs> I'm cutting you out there. You've already experienced it. I, I haven't. Well, this is just sad. I'm sorry. Yeah, I mean, to be you fair, haven't played very it. Sad. And I did, I did say last week that you already know all the puzzles, so you can't play it again. I don't know all the puzzles. But you don't know all the puzzles, don't care, because it's... it's the it's game's a... like four or five years old. Do you think I have that good a memory? I can barely remember what my name is. That's true. It's not good enough. Well, you're not meant to agree with that, but <laughs> sure. Well, um, <laughs> you guys... I didn't think that the announcements coming up for the following week, like what games are coming out, was going to be that uh, interesting to me because I thought I would know everything that was coming out, vaguely speaking. But you guys mentioned Super Monkey Ball at some point, and I had Hell no yeah. idea that was coming, and I got so excited when I heard that, so that was really yeah. cool. Um, <laughs> Little Chunky. What else? Chunky Monkey. Super Monkey Ball was so much fun. <laughs> chunky Monkey Ball. Uh... There is something actually, Ben. I want to take you up on, but I'm oh, gonna do oh. it. I'm gonna do it later, in a bit more Ooh. context. You are, are you? There's something that you said last week that triggered me, and I wanna. I wanna come back to you on that one. Are you, are you asking me out? <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> um, All right, I'm a little bit nervous about that. That's no, fine. It's, not, it's nothing. Nothing serious. <laughs> just, just something you're entirely 100 percent wrong about. But. We'll, we'll do it <laughs> Oh god! All right. Um, what, what did you What did you think about the feedback that we got from yeah. a certain happy picker? Oh, yeah. Happy you guys got that long email about all the yeah. Things. Long is an mm. understatement. Oh, I read it. I did read it, and I'm not gonna lie. This sounds horrible. But when I read it, I was like, oh god, this is like an entire episode in itself. It, it was um, so long. <laughs> I'm sure, honestly. I, I need. I, I, I meant to go back and have a look to see how long it actually was because I'm sure it was longer than the news. I didn't. No, it was. It was 100. Yeah. Um. And I didn't even know where to start with replying to most of those things. But you guys did a really good job of keeping it 
interesting and at the same time civil and being able to disagree without it coming i don't think anyway from my point of view it came across as confrontational in any way um, yeah, yeah i think you guys did a really good job at responding to some of those points and highlighted a few really interesting areas um particularly but if she still disagrees then we i I'm, I'm happy to meet in morrison's car park and just fight it out yeah yeah i'll i'll, I'll throw coins on the floor or something. i don't know what people yeah, do yeah, yeah. fights but, you, you can yeah. you can be the, the person that that does that thing you know like in wrestling where you have to hit the ground like like 10 times or i could yeah. be the person that the ref, like, the ref that's and holds <laughs> holds the cards up shuts about oh, yeah, yeah. Holds up, like the round yeah, yeah. two card and the round three card um, yeah, 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 yeah. I've got the what? So, we, so we're gonna have someone punching the ground and another person just holding cards up into the sky. <laughs> Sports, everyone. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, no. Overall, I thought it was a really good episode. You guys did great. Um, it was a thoroughly enjoyable listen. So well done. Thank you. I'm sorry, I couldn't be there. That's all right. Is I'll Charlotte coming on later? Because I really want to talk about. Yeah, you. she is. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um. So yeah. Dan's back. Dan loved yeah, uh, last week's episode, and apparently the audience didn't love it because we got, you know, no feedback. And um, <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Well, it's fine. I don't. I don't even care. It's, it's not even the feedback section. I don't, I don't, I don't even care. It's I don't the even care, there, isn't there? Like every episode yeah. has been quite consistent with listenership yeah. and people tuning in, and there's something different about last week that just. I uh, see, Dan. I, Dan, I was hoping you'd say that. Because I just want to talk about one little thing. We did break our day one listener barrier uh, last week, and we had the most listeners we've ever had on day one. Oh, fuck. so there you, go. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of dug yourself that hole, I'm afraid. Dan, you know, but... you know what it was. You know what it was. It was it was Dan having to listen to the podcast yeah, yeah. again. He listened so to it he fifteen was times. The extra on the first oh, yeah, day. I listened yeah. to it like twelve times on day one, just so you know. Ah, I see. Mm. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I did it all day just on loop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, you know, it had literally taken an entire day if you listened to it 12 times on loop. Yes. It was two hours I, long. I, <laughs> I, I calculated that. I totally calculated that. That wasn't the coincidence. All right, anyway, let's move on. Let's go. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the lovely Happy Pickler from last week uh, sent in a top three suggestion, which is very fitting for Halloween. Yeah. Um, which is what was her her words? It was her top three games that freaked you out so much you couldn't sleep? Was that it? something like that? Yeah. Mm, yeah. yeah. And so we we've, yeah. we've shortened that down to top three scariest games we have ever played. Uh, Dan, you're just going to get the short card throughout this entire thing because you abandoned us last week. So you're going first. <laughs> okay. Uh, game number one. Am I no, al- number three? Okay. Sorry. Game number th- three. <laughs> Am I allowed to have? Two games from one series of games in the same list. Whatever, do it. Okay, number three is the first Resident Evil game on the PlayStation 1. Particularly yep. that moment where you first encounter the first zombie and you get that like mini CGI sequence and he yeah. turns his head and looks at you. That scared the living hell out of me as a child. <laughs> Genuinely, I ran up to the console. I remember just running up and I pressed the button or pulled the cable out or something and just wouldn't play that game again for ages it literally just punched your tv it terrified me i might as well have done i didn't know what to do i did go back to it eventually but god it took a lot of courage to psych myself up for that again that just... that, that that game in particular is it's just really creepy oh there's lots of scenes yeah that just oh the whole atmosphere is it's the fact that there's no music. That's yeah. what makes it so creepy. You just hear the footsteps just, and the creaking yeah, doors. Like, and, oh, man. Yeah. And then the dog scene as well, which is infamous now. But Yeah, yeah. Yeah, huh. so that's number one. It's a number good one. three, even. No, number three. Yeah. Huh. And what's your number 2.5? Mm. 2.5. Oh, oh, you mean you had two no, from no, the same I, list? I think, as in, two, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, my number two is from the same franchise. Of I'm with you. Yeah, Resident Evil 6, yeah. Um... <laughs> Did you just say Resident Evil Six? Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely not that one. But what about the scene when you, when the zombie picks up an AK forty seven, or the scene where you have to push a boulder <laughs> off off a cliff? That's Resi Four, Dan. Come on, that's no, 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 no. no. Resi game. Six is like you fight a boulder, you punch it and punch it and punch it. No, that's Resi moves. Five. I swear that's okay. That's no, it's five. When I, you're I in the volcano six. at the end, that's oh, right. it is that's five. Right. Okay. Resident Evil Five ends in you're, a volcano. Yeah, yeah. You're messing with literally the guy who would want a cameo in Resident Evil at one point if you want, if you could. Wait, what? Say again. As in Dan's, Dan's trying to argue with you, even though you're like in love with that game. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's, it's a 
futile position. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's been a baby between Resident Evil and Ben. Yeah, it's called. Uh, it's called PT. Resident Ben. <laughs> Resident <laughs> Evil. PT. Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> let's let's move on quickly. Um, uh, ben, Ben, what's your number three? Well, guys, my. <laughs> <laughs> My <laughs> my number three is Resident Evil Seven. Oh, hey. I'm gonna chime um, in now and just say that's my number two. I thought it might be, yeah, because yeah. you you played it in VR, right? Yeah, that's that was particularly yeah. why I wanted to include both. Yeah. Oh, I played that scary game once in VR, didn't we? Oh, that was nothing compared to Resident Evil, man. Yeah, that was like um, a little bit unnerving. Resident Evil was just like sort of like you know, have to go to a psyche unit afterwards because it's just like there's there's a scene in it where where your wife just like charges you and chainsaws your arm off yeah and you're looking down at your hand as it's being <laughs> severed off and you can always feel it's it just, like oh man yeah. it's rough as hell and when you're when you're sitting at the table and the family are all around you and one of them is like trying to force feed you and you can see it like coming towards your face yeah like, oh, man. So, see my, my only issue with that game was the fact that the cutscenes were still like in cinema mode yeah it jumps between them that was really yeah. jarring actually because um, if they if they had that, I mean, obviously I can understand why because they've obviously edited the cutscenes not in game engine. If that makes sense, yeah, like yeah. There's a, it's a cutscene, so you can't you can't just turn a cutscene into a VR. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> they did a pretty good job of a relatively good job, considering it was like a fully fledged, proper polished horror game on a two D mm. screen, but the yeah, whole yeah. game is playable from a VR perspective as well. Like, mm. kudos for how they attempted it. Honestly, man, Kevin, one day we need to get you to play through that game in VR. <laughs> I didn't finish it, by the way. Mm. I must. Say it has it. to be done. Like yeah. after seeing Kevin's reaction to playing Outlast, I just, just <laughs> honestly watching Kevin play Resi Seven in VR would just be the funniest thing ever. Oh, I just don't get the point. <laughs> yeah, but we, it's for our <laughs> entertainment, Kevin. No one cares about you, all right? Jeez, I do. Oh, bless you. Um. Yes, yeah, so that's Resi 7, Resident and that 7. is a banging game. Play it. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, you messed up the order now, Dan. Oh, uh, well, I thought, yeah, discussion. I mean, it makes point. sense, yeah, yeah. Number three, Kev. Shoot. Hello. Hello. Hello, there. Hello! <laughs> um, okay. Mine is... Crash Bandicoot. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to say Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> well, I, I said that, what? I know, I knew you were going to say it as a joke in response to Kevin. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's because he's always playing Crash Bash. <laughs> it's like the only game he's ever played. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. Apparently. Go on, Kevin. Um, it's Lord of the Rings, War of the Rings. Oh, have a laugh. Get out of it. So, it, 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 was, it was a very, very similar game to Battle of Middle Earth, but it was... It, in, instead of where Battle of Middle Earth had, like, a, you could buy a... Or, create lots of different like lots of units in one section i don't have to describe it this one you basically once you've orders for like uh one of your units to come it, it, it always comes one person and there was this one uh in particular level uh, bear in mind i was quite young at this point and uh i have a very very deep fear of spiders um this is the biggest and, side of bollocks i've ever heard man Lord and I was in the middle the of a uh, one of the levels, and I started getting chased by all these spiders. And at that point, I just, like, I just, I just pressed escape and just quit the game. And it took me a few goes to get to past this swap, well, past any any part of this level, because this level was just full of all these spiders. And I hate spiders. I mean, I once at my university broke our internet because a spider came on. In in a video on the screen, and I got scared and knocked my tea over, and it went into my uh, into my router. So um, yeah, being a kid <laughs> playing this game, I uh, yeah, I, I, it I, took, I, took me quite a while to get. I love how you it, missed and, out the, uh, the convenient plot point in your story of the fact that a video the video you were watching was on my iPad, and you just <laughs> decided 
to just lob my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> a spider comes up in a video and you just, your instinctive reaction is just to throw the iPad across the room. <laughs> it just dinks on the, on the cup and then just dribbles into our room. <laughs> <laughs> we had no internet for like a week or something just because Kevin got scared of a spider. Ben, have you have you finished Sanity. Resident Evil Seven? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, Kevin I mean, should I, I Kevin should definitely play, play Resident Evil Seven in VR. Oh yeah, hundred yeah, yeah. no, percent. No, there a spider in there. Well, there's definitely a spider at one point. No, there is, is there? no, not quite. No, not really. No, not exactly. We're I mean, not quite. What is it? No, it's no... got it's got nine legs, not eight. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, brilliant. Cheers, <laughs> cheers, Jeff. Um. All right, yeah, that's just my okay, one. Anyway. Did you just try I, to I don't think anyone's reading. Really... Wait, I missed that completely. <laughs> I love it. Like we're talking um, about top yeah. three scariest games, right? And Kevin just has to get a FIFA reference in there. Like no matter what. <laughs> it's not even FIFA. Well, okay, football, whatever. Yeah, you know, no matter what the top three is, Kevin just has to say something to do with football, don't he? <laughs> it's the biggest sport ever. Are you on commission from EA or something? My own commission, I wish I was. <laughs> Alright, so Kevin's uh, number three was just garbage. Um, Lord of the Rings. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Rings. Oh my <laughs> god, it was just not even... Oh. oh man. I was a kid back then, man. Come maybe on. Next year, maybe, right, maybe next year, around this time, around Halloween again, we should do top three scariest games again. But we, Dan, me and you should make it our goal this year to make Kevin play as many terrifying games <laughs> terrifying as possible. Him. Completely traumatizing. Well, see how quickly like we can get Lord of the Rings off I that list. I don't see the point. Of, oh, you guys are just mean. <laughs> just an innocent young man trying to get his way in life. <laughs> uh, right, so Dan's, Dan's number two is Resident Evil yep, 7. So my on. number okay. two is... Uh, Visage or vis- visage or vi- visage or visage. Um, I don't know how to say uh, it. A haunted house type thing. Visage. V- visage. Yeah. Uh, v i s a g e. That is how you spell it. I don't know it's how you say it. Pronounced visage. Hundred percent. Visage. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Korean. Um, this is a haunted house. Like game, right? Yes. So it's quite basically a spiritual success in PT. Um, um and. It it captures the PT atmosphere very well. Uh, so like no noise, you know, very quiet. All you can hear is your footsteps. And but it's I haven't actually played that much of it to be honest because it kind of terrified me a little bit. Um, but it has this sort of the mechanic in it is when you're in the dark, you lose sanity. And is that the same thing as amnesia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's basically copies that, but but in a haunted house, real very realistic setting, you know, very polished graphics and stuff. So, and you know, you're walking through this house and you you see a dark corridor and you're sort of like, and there's a light switch at the end of the corridor. So you start walking through the dark, and as you when you're in the dark or as you start going insane, the horror elements are completely randomized. Hmm. So so okay. they're not just like scripted or anything. It's like the more insane you go, the more random horror stuff happens to you, essentially. Which it becomes that more just, chaotic. Exactly. That, that adds so much to it, though, because you have no idea when something's going to happen. It's not predictable at all, you know? Yeah. So, um, but it's, yeah, it's it's terrifying. I made... Charlotte the other day was like, oh, can I... I want to watch a donkey video, video game, donkey video. She, she loves them. Yeah, and, um, and I was like, all right, I'm going to find one. And I found his video on this game really funny. So I put it on and after six minutes of watching it, she was like, that was not funny at all. That was terrifying. And I <laughs> was like, okay. Um, yeah, so. It's very engrossed in a video, is not she? Yeah. So it's, it, 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 it's good. I haven't played nearly enough of it. To be honest, it shouldn't really be on my list because because I haven't played enough of it. It might, you know, I haven't, I haven't actually encountered that many scares in it. So I don't really know what, the entity is mm. <laughs> so I'm playing it just a wimp mate no so I mean you know I could be saying oh yeah v- Visegi is the scariest game ever and then it's like the state puff marshmallow man or something that, that chases you down and it's like 
so <laughs> I have no idea what the, what the the enemy is. So it might not be as terrifying as I think it is. It's just the atmosphere is incredibly creepy. Yeah, you had a scary experience playing that game. Indeed, I did. Um, indeed, 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 I did. I did. Uh, Kevin, Mister Kevlar. Mine is a. God. I'd say one that's quite pro- probably on a lot of people's lists. Uh, which is Outlast. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and for people that don't know this game, which you'd be very surprised if you don't, basically a game we have to run and hide from crazy people. Indeed. Uh, you don't have any weapons. All you have is a camera with a torch, and you feel very helpless. Night, night vision, not torch. Night vision, yeah. Um. Yeah, it's it's simply playing that game. Well, I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you. I didn't really play much of the game. Ben played most of it for. <laughs> um, and it's it's just very terrifying. You just feel, you feel like you have no. Is this the one where you threw my keyboard? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, I mean, you can kind of see a trend happening here now. Um, <laughs> so Kevin has a very adult reaction to getting scared where he just throws whatever he's holding. Uh, so made him play Outlast. And for those of you that have played it, there is a, what I would consider a minor jump scare about three minutes into the game. So Kevin gets to that bit. It's the first one I think it is. Isn't yeah, it? when you open the door and the thing comes at you. Yeah. And um, Kevin just lobs my keyboard. <laughs> I'm like, that's it I'm done yeah, I'm off. It. I don't see the oh, point wait, oh your stupid. rage afterwards was so funny as well <laughs> I completely forgot about that so you were just like no I don't see the point in playing it why would anyone want to be scared I, <laughs> I still agree with you I don't oh, you know, so that's, not, that's, that's, that's not the first time I've ever lobbed a keyboard from being scared of something do you, ever, do you know that um that uh, online like maze oh, game yeah, where you have yeah, like yeah. yeah and you and you get to the, the red bit yeah I basically it's like someone gave me that to play it and I was playing it and it scared me and I and I threw his keyboard and broke it um, I mean to be fair he, he did make you play that game which is you know it's a bit mean isn't it so you did yeah. he did deserve to have his keyboard broken I was only like 10 as well at the time yeah that's a bit mean yeah. That's, that's the one but where yeah, the maze so... gets smaller and smaller, and that's so it. You lean yeah, closer yeah, and closer right to the, the screen. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah um, Outlast is, is, is yeah. very, very good. Though. I mean, Outlast Two wasn't as scary, but I did play a lot more of that yeah. game. Maybe the more you play it, the less scared that, you. Can that's feel usually it. the case with horror games. The first hour is always hard because you're sort of sussing out, and then, and then after that, it's more you're just trying to complete it, sort of thing. <laughs> so, mm. yeah. you know what? I, I, f- I found out last two more. There was a lot more room to run around. There was a lot more outside areas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Le- less enclosed and claustrophobic, I guess. Yeah. So. And and the idea that although you're on like a weird cult, crazy ass, religious island thing, it, it's not as crazy as being in, in like an asylum. It, it's less real. If that makes sense. Yeah. I, I mean, in my opinion, anyway, like Outlast One is more like. You know, this dude goes into an abandoned asylum, of which there are many around the world, sort of thing, and it it feels like a real thing that could well happen. Mm. But the cult side of it, again, obviously that that is real. That side of it that can happen, but it I feel like it's portrayed in a way that's a bit more fantastical. You know, like magic, and I don't know, didn't feel as real. But my word, yeah. Outlast Two is a very good game, though. That witch man. Yeah. Oh, honestly, oh, that, she was scary. Yeah, yeah. That was scary. That, that had like proper. Have you played it, Dan? No, I played a bit of the first one, but it never really gripped me, to be honest. <sighs> I don't know. I don't know how you. God, uh, I, I struggle with that because I'm like, I really want to recommend it to you, but I don't. Mm. If it hasn't gripped you already, I, I don't know what how I can change your mind on it. If you know what I mean. I think. <laughs> I do want to try and get into horror games a bit more, I think. Um, oh, Dan, you're talking to the right person. I know, I know. But I, I, I already know the game that I think I want to start with. Uh, and that's Alien Isolation. I really want to play that. Hell yes. Good. Then uh, I will play that. Someday. Do it. It's, it's really, really good. Someday in the future. Would you pick it up? It's like three quid or something. I know. <laughs> it's so cheap. I know. I'm going and... blind as well. I don't really know much about it. 
Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, cool. Outlast, highly recommend. Um, yeah, it was the Outlast too. The the witch woman gives like proper. Um, Chills. Uh, no, 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 no. P- pyramid head vibes from oh, yeah. Silent Hill. Yeah. Oh, he's cool, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pyramid Head was cool. Uh, cool, Dan. You want to hit us with your number one banger? What is the scariest game I've ever played? The scariest game you've ever dun, dun, played. Dun. Evil Within. No, I'm joking. It's not real. Um, <laughs> <laughs> do you imagine? Amazing. Um, uh, this, I actually really enjoyed this question because it made me think about how many games have actually scared me in the past. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to go with Fear. The first Fear game. Fair. Good shout. Because it's... I don't Fair. think it gets enough credit for being a horror game. Mm. It's for its time it had phenomenal like first person shooting mechanics. Do, 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 do. Really, really fun, solid shooter with a cool story. But the pacing of the game was broken up by all these supernatural kind of uh grudge girl type character psychic crazy young girl coming into the game and just warping things massively. Yep. But there were so many moments in that game that just uh, burned into my brain. Because they yeah, terrified like the one me. when you go so, up the ladder, is it? Yeah, it's when you go yeah, down the ladder. One. You're at the top of the ladder, and no, you, as you turn around. And as you, as you turn around, and your, yeah, your yeah. point of view just dips <laughs> below the top layer of the ladder, you just see her feet in front of you. Oh, oh god, just gives me man. chills thinking about it. Yeah, and there's just little moments you just catch her from time to time, like darting across in the distance as a silhouette, and then these other moments which are opposite end of the spectrum where you're in a room and she's basically melting the environment around you and causing explosions of hellfire and stuff and you just it just comes out of nowhere and you're like what the hell is is i don't yeah, to be honest i, I don't think fear gets enough credit full stop it doesn't like no, it doesn't. i loved it so much i played and it so many times and there's never been a game really like it has there well, you think about it fear too like Okay, apart from, <laughs> apart from the Fear trilogy, yes. Yeah. Um, but, like, the, you know, a really solid first-person shooter, with, with, but horror at mm. the same time. That 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 thing, that culmination has never really happened again, or never really has happened, that I can think of anyway. Um, Time Split has had a few really good horror levels in there. Yeah, the Half-Life as well, I guess. So yeah, had like, the thingy bits. But, like, it's, you know, nothing that is designed to be a a horror experience i guess yeah yeah exactly um oh i want to play it again man. Yeah, i really want to play the first yeah, one again really well. so good you get like the uh the giant nail gun type weapon in it where you, you shoot an enemy and they just get launched backwards and pinned to the wall and it's just yeah the shooting so, in that game so is so fun. good man yeah. i hope it still holds up the like the shooting mechanics and stuff because uh, it was i think it would yeah i think it would um probably not as much as you'd hope but i think Nah, nah, I think get honestly. over that first hurdle when you'll still enjoy it. Yeah, definitely. Um, good shout, man. I, know, I wasn't expecting anyone mm. to pick something like that. That's good. It's good. A little, little curveball. Yeah. Uh, Swish. Who's, who's next? At me? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so my number one is obvious. Um, all right, all together, guys. Silent Hill. Silent Hill. <laughs> PT. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, side of the hill. I was, I was half. Right. Just, Ke- just Kevin. Just <laughs> Dad starts saying silent, and Kevin just goes hill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, PT. I'm not gonna. I feel like I've spoken about this every week for about four weeks now. Uh, PT. Yeah, what's it about? I don't know. What you need to talk about. I'm not doing it, man. It's just a horror masterpiece. I don't care that it's a demo. It's amazing. Um, I think nothing the, will ever come close. I don't think so. there's something nice about it being a like a temporary ethereal thing in history where it's like yeah. appeared and then disappeared. It makes it like an old like you'd imagine like an old VHS tape that you find in a house that's haunted yeah, yeah. and you play it. Like, you know <laughs> what I mean? And it's got I don't know. It's weird because it's got like a it's no one really knows what the story is. Yeah. You know, it's so up for. Um, uh, spe- debate. speculation and debate yeah. yeah and it's I don't know like, I honestly I honestly think in like 10 20 years they're going to look back and be like um, you know people aren't going to know about it it's going to be really hard to find mm-hmm. and Dan do you know about the PT news this week no okay I'll just bring it up now um, but, uh, so because originally I was thinking you know 10 20 years they're going to be looking back and thinking 
you know this this masterpiece that you can't get anymore sort of thing but apparently it's someone that has uh recreated it on pc now for anyone oh, to download I know about that yeah so um Ooh. so that's that's interesting but and there's it's, also it's people just... emulating it as well um people have found a way to emulate oh have they okay cool yeah so um, it's not but... impossible to find but as you say in, tw- in 10 10 or 20 years time it's going to be one of those folklore gaming legends yeah or something. yeah exactly yeah, yeah. yeah it's going to be like the uh the uh um fucking what's his name greg jimmy uh, Leroy Jenkins thing. Oh. There you go. You know how it's like this little story about thing yeah. that happened. It's going to be like that, like PT, the game that never happened. Yeah. And then like spooky music in the background, and it'll be like PT was this. Um... Yeah. Anyway. Uh... <laughs> PT, the game that never happened. Leroy. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> same thing, man. It's, it's literally the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, go on, Kevin, we're still number one. I swear to God, yours number one is just going to be garbage, isn't it? Okay, my number one is the very first scary game I've ever played. Oh, God. And I don't think I got past the first person you have to kill. as in Bioshock. So, right as you... I think you start off in a plane, don't you? And you... you have you have you guys played yeah, Bioshock? yeah. Yeah, so you start in a plane, you, you you crash into some water and you swim up to a, is it a lighthouse, yes. I think? Yeah. You swim up to something, yeah. And then you go through a door. Uh, it's and just then so you're amusing around. listening to Kevin describe Bioshock to people. <laughs> <laughs> like one of those uh, like proper classic games. Like FIFA, yeah, this game where you basically play 11 versus 11 and you kick a ball about. <laughs> go on, sorry. <laughs> I was enjoying your description, <laughs> Kevin. My yeah, go on. So, yeah. Wait, yeah. no, no. So, so you're in a plane, right? Then you crash, and then you go to a lighthouse. Go on, I'm intrigued. Yeah, so you swim up to a lighthouse, and I'm not really sure what you... I, do, do you have any weapons or anything with you? I can't really remember that much, no. but... You walk into, like, this sort of an open area, and, and then there's, like, a, a doorway to your right. So you go through the door right, doorway, and then out smashes this dude with a uh, is either a hammer or a wrench just on fire and starts screaming and running at you. <laughs> that was it. Couldn't do any more. I was like, nope. I, lo- I love how even Kevin even managed to screw up a description of Bioshock. Well, he missed so, out like one of the most revolutionary like, he's, scenes he's in gaming history. He literally missed out yeah, that, what Bioshock is. <laughs> so to, to everyone out there oh, what, that the, hasn't played Bioshock the... and has no idea what it is, they, they think that it's a game where you crash a plane you find a lighthouse. You, you walk find into a lighthouse, lighthouse, and then, <laughs> and then a guy with a wrench comes out the door to your right in the lighthouse. And That's just how you. it starts. Well, no, Ke- Kevin. Oh, no, Kevin, I there's a bit you're missing. To... Yeah, what? think, Kevin. No, no, don't say it, Dan. Go no. on, Kevin. What's the bit you're missing? Come well, on. I, I know at one point you're under. It's like a big underwater world, isn't it? Is that something else I'm thinking of? <laughs> He's done it. <laughs> we got him, guys. <sighs> Is that, is that a blunder? I don't know. Is that... uh... Yeah. I think this is the issue is that we're just so good at picking up your blunders straight away now. Um, it is. I, I can't remember. It's just don't try and explain play... a game that is it's like an the... absolute classic to so many people. If you can't I'm sorry, remember but it. you asked me to choose my top three games, yeah? This is the moment that I had that just, just stuck in my yes. head. I'm sorry that yeah, I don't yeah. know the backstory between it's not Bioshock. It's backstory. It's the game. Other... It's the intro. It's the introduction I've played to the in... game. Okay, but I play- I saw the introduction like once. And you don't remember the bit, yeah, with the whale. <laughs> no. Oh. I'll probably remember if I saw it. What do you mean? What what, what happened? Uh, that's right. Uh, but by a shot to you or something. What? And then their tagline is "Battle of the Lighthouse." <laughs> <laughs> It's just the one-on-one duel, and if you win, the game <laughs> the game finishes. <laughs> you walk in, you haven't got a weapon, right? And then a guy, a flaming a guy on fire with a wrench, just attacks you for about seven hours. He's just a lighthouse yeah, keeper. It. He just gets really territorial <laughs> when somebody walks into his lighthouse. <laughs> oh, is Kevin upset? Kevin, it's okay. I'm not upset. I just don't remember. That's all it is. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Maybe, maybe refrain from trying to describe like a classic game to uh, to people when you haven't played it. 
So th- this whole thing with the this whale, are, are you not in an underwater world at well, one point? Yeah, you skipped that bit. You said you walk into a lighthouse and a guy with a wrench attacks you. One of the most amazing parts of the game is like the whole welcome to Bioshock bit, where or welcome to Rapture, and you go down in this elevator and the window opens up in front of you and you just see this oh my god amazing you do, you? like water world <laughs> open up in front of you. It's like okay, yeah, no, no, all right, can you see, that, can you see why we're quite offended now? Fish and whales. Yeah, and it's okay. Crazy. It's such a cool gaming scene yeah okay no I yeah all right, dude all, right. all right <laughs> bioshock battle of I the lighthouse f- oh man I, th- I, knew- I know that bit now i know you're talking if you'd have described that bit to me i would have we could have skipped all this no, but, nonsense but, in yeah, the middle you can see why we were a bit like come on right <laughs> well i thought maybe i I just get straight to the point in it yeah, but you were describing it like have... scene for scene, and then suddenly a guy jumps know. out of the lighthouse. Well, no, you, 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 you were making me, you were making it think as if I described it scene for so scene. So why did you say that you started off in a plane and then you crashed and then you found a lighthouse? I was given a, t- a small bit of context, a bit of background. But you didn't give the context because you're in an underwater <laughs> <I> town. <did. laughs> you missed the context of the entire thing. <laughs> you just need to understand. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, right, Amazing. Kevin, you need to play Bioshock, man. It's so good. I can't get past that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's basically a boss, isn't he? he well, yeah, he's, he's, he's a boss from my mental state. Keeper of the lighthouse. I <laughs> knew <laughs> 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 you could screw that up man. so hard. You wait till he sees the end of Infinite. He's gonna lose his mind. <laughs> Oh god! Imagine him trying to describe the end of Infinite. <laughs> Jesus. Um, all right, sweet ads. That is that is our top three scariest games. That was um, fun. We that took us forty two minutes. I don't give. I don't even care. That was fun. That, that that that. I mean, to be fair, obviously, I love horror games, so that was always going to be like my favorite one. But yeah. Um, sweet ads. Okay, so sweet we up, need Mike. a top three for next week. Any any volunteers? Uh, not from the top of my head right now. You got anything? Moments, moment. Okay, top three moments that genuinely made you smile. Wholesome. Top three moments that made you Wholes- throw whatever you're holding. <laughs> uh, so wait, what moments that made you smile? Baby, for you just wholesome, across the wholesome room. moments or rage quit moments? Oh, rage quit could be good, but wholesome I like as well. Oh come on, man! Oh, All right, no, the, the next two weeks. Ben already, ben the already next, knows my the number next one. two weeks. We've got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, um, we've got. Okay, oh, you know my number one rage quit, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, oh no! Can we do rage quits, please? Come on. Yeah, we'll yeah do rage, rage quits. That's gonna be so funny. Oh. Kevin's top one is just the funniest thing. Ever. <laughs> 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 I can't wait. Um, go on, so next week is top three rage rage quits. <laughs> All right, so um, obviously our top three is really important because we're like the famous people, yeah. But if people want to tell us their top three, right? Because there's there's a lot of horror games out there, you know. You got you got Lord of the Rings, Battle for Middle Earth. <laughs> you got <laughs> you got Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. Um, <laughs> you got Lego, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> You know? <laughs> so there's a lot of other horror games out there. So if people would like to write in and tell us about their their scariest experiences in the video game world, Kevin, how do they do that? Why? What? 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 You usually go on for like a whole like four minutes about talking about what we, what they can do. No, the, get, have you never noticed that you're like if they want to tell us about this and they want to tell us about this and then this or how they can do this <laughs> and then and you give it to me but this time you didn't bother doing it I uh, sorry I just thought I'd change, mix it up a bit uh, so, uh, sorry sorry listeners sorry three, next, next three time I'll minutes. say the exact this is why people same thing come again alright this is why people come oh, sorry, back to fine, listen to fine, you yeah, talk and talk and talk content. about nonsense it's fine yeah 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 whatever um, they can tell tell us how uh, Paul Ben was just now. Um, no, on Twitter, Kevin, you can't do that unless I introduce it that way. Uh, they can tell Ben that he's wrong 
uh, via email, which is praiseofpicklepodcast at gmail dot com, or they can respond to Ben's question or tell him that his question <laughs> and the way he asked it sucked on Facebook at facebook dot com slash praiseofpickle, or or. Uh, go to our YouTube channel. <laughs> uh, wait, have you said Twitter yet? I missed, yeah, yeah. What was the first one I said. You didn't say Twitter. Uh, at Praise the at Pickle. Praise the Pickle. What was it? At Praise the Pickle. Yeah. Like the at, at the sign pickle. and then Praise the Pickle on Twitter. Yeah. At Praise the Pickle. Got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As in, like when you praise a pickle. You know what I mean? But it's like the and only pickle it. that you would be praising. Right. So it's Praise the Pickle. As mm-hmm. if it was like and the last pickle in existence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you imagine if you like you had like everyone was eating burgers, right? But but pickles were extinct. Mm-hmm. So and then that you find this What's one on last there? pickle, you know. And then <laughs> you basically have that moment that um Marshall has in How I Met Your Mother. And you just describe this burger with this one pickle. And you could almost describe that situation as, you know, praise the pickle. Um so this could be like that, in a post-apocalyptic future as well because pickles keep really well in jars like they last for ages but you have no idea how many analogies i have okay <laughs> all right like okay I'll, i've got one more for this week and i'll do one analogy a week for the for, <laughs> till the end of time all right you say you guys seen Zombieland, yeah the first one yes yeah so you know um tallahassee and, and Zombieland is after that twinkie because you know we keep trying yeah. to find a twinkie and they're all extinct um, imagine that, but he's trying to find a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But look, can, like when you see it, you can just see how emotional he's getting. You know, he's just so mm. angry about when he, you know, right at the end when he finds those. Sorry, guys, spoiler alert for Zombieland. Uh, he finds these Twinkies at the end, and then he opens it up, and he's like, "Oh my god, Twinkies!" And then, and then they've been eaten by mice, and he just looks completely heartbroken. Mm. Imagine that, but instead of Twinkies, it's a pickle. Because then, in that situation, you could pretty much say that he was praising the pickle. Yes. That was... See, the whole time I thought the pickle was like a, you're in like a really like tight spot you're in a bit of a pickle. It could also be interpreted that way, Kevin. That yeah, that's that's, that's for next or, week's analogy. Or for our French listeners, it's praise the pickle. <laughs> what? <laughs> Kevin, I didn't know you were fluent. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right, guys. It's the return of of the news. The man. news, 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 man, news, man. Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. <laughs> Kev, you know when you do an echo impression, it has to get quieter and quieter, right? If you just go, and, and, Daniel, and, and, Daniel, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't quite have the same effect. Oh, I was, I was giving Daniel's cue. That's what I was doing. I think, I think I knew when to start. Thanks, though, Kevin. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel, Daniel. Right. Dan. Hello, hello, hello. Make my sensual love to our eardrums with the news of the week, please. Absolutely, it would be a pleasure. Um. <laughs> I, I don't have that much though I'm afraid I'm a bit off form alright you're fired oh, let's move okay. on <laughs> alright go on go on first one hit me up is I am so so happy to hear this one Death Stranding brand new Kojima game is coming to PC dun dun oh, yes I am so yeah it's happy. fine whatever yeah great move on summer 2020 Death Stranding is coming to the PC that is not a Small deal, guys. That's the no. Big that's deal. A, that's a that is a piss take. No, it's not. How is that? <laughs> no, I've been holding on to my PlayStation Four for like two years. Well, you're an idiot. Then. Game. You got a gaming PC. You don't need a PS4 anymore. Get rid of what? it. But, Sell it. What so, you t- give it, it was Warfare. a PS4 get exclusive. What? Yeah, but it was. That's the thing, isn't it? It was. And no, it's not. Well, that's 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 the new story. Yeah. yeah. Why, um, can't, <laughs> why can't all platforms just come together as one? and exactly. share all games across all platforms and all be cross-play and... uh, because then the gaming market would become monopolised I hate Monopoly that's the I think worst game people... it is. what I played a game on Monopoly the other day and I won just saying did, it take you what, okay, did you just buy everything no I pick you know you toast. have to play with other people right Kevin <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, what you do? I was the banker, and I just I just withdrew all the money, and I won. <laughs> Still in his pocket right now. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's that is good. See, I'm really happy about that. I know some people, PlayStation fans, are going to be a bit pissed off, but. I ain't complaining because I get to play Death Stranding and I'm buzzing for it because Metal Gear Solid was one of my favourite game series of all time. Mm. Anyway, next thing. Fresh off the press, guys. BlizzCon oh. was today. This very day. Yeah. What day is it oh. today? It's Friday. It's BlizzCon day. It's Friday in Earth Cali- California. Yeah. And BlizzCon was today. BlizzCon was indeed today. So... We know that Blizzard are a little bit anxious about what's going on. And for some reason, quite a lot of news has been overshadowed by these two big announcements that they've made, including some like CGI trailers and things, which I haven't seen yet. But Diablo 4, whoop whoop, and Overwatch 2, double whoop. Double oh. whoop. Yeah, they're both coming out, confirmed, guaranteed, 100%. So excited! Yeah. That is, I'm, I, I, my issue is right. Is that I've just cancelled yeah. my Call of Duty pre-order because I'm like, no, I am a, uh, I am a out up, you know, a a great citizen of the of the this planet we call Earth, and I'm not going to stand for this this uh, situation. And now they've announced Overwatch Two and Diablo Four. Like it's, mm. it's it's like they knew that I cancelled my pre-order. Yeah, me too. You know, I, I know. And, they, and they were just but like, I right, hate well, that you've cancelled it because I'm actually well annoyed you guys have cancelled it. But by the way, just throwing Why? it out there. Do you have it? Well, I'm just just coming with my computer. Is it? Oh. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> to be honest, the they have. I should also say that during the event today, they did address. I mean, they kind of had to address the whole Blitz oh, did they? thing. They did address it, and they did apologise. And basically, they said that they had acted too hastily, that they were too quick to jump the gun and oh, do something good. about it. Right. Um, and they've addressed that. What none of the news sources that I've seen have addressed are the amount of people standing right outside the front doors dressed as Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> <laughs> and giving away free Hong Kong t-shirts, like literally... F- Free honey. Free, Hong, <laughs> free honey. Free honey. Free, free Hong Kong t-shirts. Free t-shirts that say free Hong Kong on them. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I got you. <laughs> handing things out outside. There's basically like large-scale protests happening right outside. Um, and the, the amount of news I coming think, out seems uh, to be quite limited at the moment in terms of what's happening inside the event. You see, this whole Blizzard thing was was massive, yeah. But... The fact that they have owned up to it now and they have apologised, you know. Stop trying what's... to justify buying Call of Duty, Ben. I know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no, no. But what, what, what's the issue now? Do you know what I mean? What, what yeah. more do they want from them? They have apologised and they've said that they've acted too hastily. You know, they've completely owned up to it. What do they want to happen now? What is the point in a protest unless there's a goal? Like, what, what, what do they want? I think, it to I think it was... shut down. Like, what? It was good of them to, to get all gone, Kevin. I was gonna, I was gonna make a joke. But it's not needed. <laughs> no, 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 no. Go on, go on, Kevin. You have the floor. <laughs> to get all their trophies and taken away and to be banned. Great. That's what um, people want. Go on, Dan. <laughs> that's, that's what they want to do it. In the moment, it would have been all right. Why did you let me say it? Spotlight on your face. Let's go. <laughs> Oh, that's gonna that's like my favourite moment in this podcast, man. <laughs> the awkwardly framed joke. <laughs> Go on, Kevin, get on stage. Tell us a joke. You have the floor, Kevin. Um... <laughs> oh, a joke sounds so awkward when there's nothing around it. It's so good. Uh, sorry, go on. Yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. So. Where I stand with this is I was never intending to never ever play Call of Duty when I cancelled. Mm. And I still plan to play it. Especially now that we are games journalists, I feel like it's probably right that we play the most recent games. So if yeah, yeah. you we know, rise above want to sponsor it. us. Um, <laughs> but I, I genuinely do want to pick it up and play it. Especially that they've reversed on the loot box thing. Uh, I, 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 I don't like the term, I don't like the term reversed. 
because Paused. they never actually said that they were going to be doing loot boxes. Bear that in mind. Uh, no, that's true. That is true. But Ooh. it was just... I feel like with the amount of evidence that we had and the way it was all... Maybe, maybe it was just like negative propaganda. Maybe, maybe they were never going to do that. Maybe it was always going to be a battle pass system and there are still like boxes in the game that you can click on to open, kind of like Overwatch or whatever. Yeah. That was always going to be there and then maybe it was just something that was misinterpreted. Um, the thing that they did say was that guns and attachments, I think, would be available in loot boxes. I think that was confirmed at some point. I think. No, um, no, no. If it was, it was basically that they, they, I'm sure they pretty much said that that nothing that affects gameplay is going to be in loot boxes. That was the thing. Uh, I think no, I think early on in this discussion there was there were signs of people being able to fast track their game progression. I think that I think that was part of the rumors. Potentially, part I mean, all of this kind of all happened at once, didn't it? It was the loot box stuff. It was the yeah. the, the other Activision stuff, the China stuff. Um, now that the game's come out and it's been received well and it isn't infested with loot boxes as far as I can tell mm. I'm tempted to jump back on board because I've, yeah. heard, I've heard the campaign it's... is really really good but if it, you say it's been received very well Dan but did you know that it's currently sitting on, on a 3.6 yes, out of 10 I did. Why, why 3.2 is that? the last I checked 3.2, why is that Dan? Picard, nice segue by the way Thank you. It's good, wasn't it? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> oh, so orgasmic. I read about this a few days ago. I didn't really get much of an idea of what it was about until like today. But basically, the game, although the people that make it, although Infinity Wars have said quite clearly that this is not a game based on real world events, it's not supposed to represent anything that's happened in real life. One of the things that happens in the story of the game, um, what do they call it? It's like a Death Valley or something. Some hi- highway of death. Thank you. Of yeah, something like that. that. Exactly. So, the similarities between this event that happens in the game and an event that happened in real life are so remarkably close that it's almost impossible to say that they're not based on each other. Like it's it's almost identical, with the exception of one key element, and that was that they they express in the game apparently some bombing runs and lots of people dying and it all being a bit of a catastrophe really and in the game the Russians do it but in real life the Americans do it so what the Russians have come out and said is basically this this game is being used to in a way rewrite history and also to spread negative propaganda about the Russians so obviously Russian reviewers in particular have flooded Metacritic and just said this is a awful 0 out of 10 game filled with propaganda that's betraying the US military to be the good guys when in reality in this particular event that they're talking about they were the bad guys supposedly that's what I've read of this that is exactly what I've read as well um, oh. so yeah classic American company just being like yeah uh, you know it's not it's like not based on real events but Everything is exactly the same except for the person that's doing the bombing. Yeah. Convenient? Yeah. I think not. Um, it is a bit weird. I don't understand what the motive was there. I, I do. It's difficult, isn't it? Because if you're an American game studio, as honest and raw as this game is attempting to be, like. They have to be careful still. They have to be so careful. You wouldn't see a game about the colonization of the Americas and the indigenous people that live there, Mm. for example. Because we all know... Well, well, you you might see it, but it wouldn't be represented in in a a factual matter, would it? No, no. It would be like, oh, exploring new lands and, you know, (laughs) whatever his name was. What's the bloody guy's name? Cornelius, Um, no... um, Oh, you've you've just put that name in my head now, and I'm not going to be able to forget it. It's Christopher uh, Columbus, is it? Columbus, that's yeah. the one. Yeah, Columbus is will be like <laughs> you know it'll be like arty farty, and Columbus would actually be a rabbit or something. Yeah, he'd be befriending and, um, the native population of <laughs> of, of eggs <laughs> yeah. or hamsters. Yeah, <laughs> while eating carrots. Hamster eggs. Um, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, so I don't. Uh, the thing is, I, is I don't understand. Surely the person behind the the making and the ideas of this this particular level or any of the levels, they must have got this idea from somewhere. With the idea, why did they? Why did they think it was going to be okay to just just essentially twist it on its head? And Some, make it not I, about... I, I think someone has just screwed up royally, basically. But so, so. But people surely no, people test these no, games. I know, Why don't they not I know, say things? I know. But the, how many times have we gone through the situation, Kev? We can't. Uh, we can't oh, just keep sh- saying people test games, but people are still idiots. Remember. Um, but the, I think one of the other issues is, is as well is that when you're making a game, where you're the, you're the protagonist, you know you're playing the protagonist you can't portray your side to be bad i think that's why but then at the same time why pick a real life situation why not just pick yeah exactly that's one? what i don't understand so, why, why pick a real life situation I, I have no idea and then and then, and then when they do it why why openly admit that it's not about that considering it's so yeah identical but, but, i mean ba- it basically they, they thought that they would get away with it that that's what it's come down to I they don't thought think it's oh it's not thing. actually russians uh, you know it's the the what, what do they call them in the game? Uh, Urzikstan. It's the Urzikstan. It's like, yeah, on the highway of death in Russia, um, mm. you know, at the same time that the situation happened in real life. But it's the Urzikstan. It's fine. Like, you can't just change the name of someone and expect it to not have parallels. It's so ridiculous. One, one way of looking at this might be... So, I've I've only seen, in terms of the campaign, apart from the trailers, I've only seen the first three minutes of gameplay, maybe five and in the first literally the first like 30 seconds of the game it's pretty brutal and it hits really close to home like it's doesn't hold back anything at all it's a massacre like it's really really dark the first Mm. 30 seconds of the game are as dark if not worse probably worse than the um no russian level that everyone talks about yeah from the original game the modern warfare 2 yeah 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 Yeah, in the airport um, mm. I think the point is the people that have written this game it looks like a really high budget script and the voice acting and the uh, the facial animations and everything are like proper next level high quality products but they've obviously put a lot of time into the script and I think what they're trying to do is make the story feel somewhat realistic and relatable but so deeply that you could imagine it happening today to you and the people around you like it's really 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 dark there's no getting away from that and i guess Mm. one of the ways to do that is to not make anything up because as soon as you start pushing the boundaries of what's believable and what's not you can start breaking that immersion i I think i think you'll see what i mean when you start playing the game if you haven't played it already um i know you guys haven't yet but you'll see what i mean it's it's really close to home it's like you are just... Right, I think I missed the first sentence. Are we talking about Call of Duty still? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, How have you played it? I've only seen the first... I've seen the first, like, four minutes. Oh, you've seen there. it? Okay, sorry. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Was you here? <laughs> have you been here? <laughs> no, because no, cause he was like, oh, I know you guys ain't played it or whatever. And I was like, but I thought you cancelled your pre-order. Yeah, but he what? said that he watched He said that he oh, watched it. Oh, I missed it. that bit. All right, don't worry. I've also Go read on. a fair bit about what happens in the first, like, couple of hours of the game. And it's... Yeah, it's... Uh, disturbing and I think uh, is that, that is that the bit where they were i think it was that the demo bit of like um that they when you're going through like all the buildings into like families homes and stuff yeah yeah and there's yeah. like literally yeah. screaming women and like people holding babies yes. and you've got the gun what rating is this game oh, it's going to be 18 yeah. <laughs> it's so, definitely 18 yeah, yeah. How can that many? Oh, I say how many kids? How many kids buy it? I just don't really... <laughs> yeah, that's, that's never kids. stopped anyone. Has it really? <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to. I got. I got to stop once from buying a Green Day album. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like 15 years old or something, and I went into a Sainsbury's to buy a Green Day album, and I was like, oh, can I have some ID, please? Aww. And I was like, really? Yeah, I was. I was 17 when I got ID'd buying Metal Gear Solid on PSP, Ooh. and it was a 15 rating. So I was 17, and I thought I was 14. Sad. Poor Ben and your baby face. Yeah. I'm 25, it's still <laughs> like I'm about 12. Got some hair, man. It's not as simple as that. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> 
<laughs> Whatever, man. Anyway, uh, anyway. Let's, let's move away from this conflict. Uh, yeah, midget. Call of Duty, it's... I mean, yeah, it's killing it. It really is in terms of the core game itself. It's absolutely killing mm. it right now. The, yeah. the rain's through the roof. People are loving it. Have you seen the... Um... The real, I think the realism mode. I loved the realism mode. I played that in the beta, and it was my favorite. I loved Did it. you? It looks so. Wait, is it like cool. what hardcore mode and pretty much? Mode, yeah. <gasps> yeah. Yeah. I'm so excited. They had it as a limited time event. It's, not that. I, not that cool. I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> yes, you, you totally are. are. I mean, to be fair, now that I know Kevin has it as well, it could be a good game for all three of us to play. Yeah. Oh, yeah. raggy room. Yeah. 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 All right. Let's move uh, on excellent. to the other news. Yeah. Uh, Xbox All Access subscription service finally comes to the UK. Basically, it's going global, um, but we only care about our country. So exactly. The, Obviously. The UK, it is coming too. Uh, and if you don't know, that's basically the service that allows you to take out an Xbox as a service, like on finance, basically. So it sounds really good. <laughs> it's a really clever idea, and I think it kind yeah. of bridges the gap between the console and the PC gaming market because it allows you yep. to upgrade, kind of like you would a mobile phone. So you pay whatever it is, $15, $20 a month, and choose the model that you want to get, as you would in a car phone warehouse or whatever. And it gets sent to you, and you just pay a little bit each month, and at the end you can choose to pay a bit more and keep it, I think, or once you paid it off, it's yours. Um, but the interesting thing about this is that they're offering... Project Scarlet, the new console, at the I think they're doing it as this launches in the UK. So you'll basically start paying for it, get it on day one, and you don't have to yep. lay down like six hundred pounds or whatever it's going to cost when the console arrives. Um, I think it's a good idea. I like it. Brilliant. As long as yeah. people don't get themselves. I'm, into I, I, it credit. sounds so bad, but I'm actually really tempted to get this. <laughs> mm, are we now? Yeah, mainly. Uh, okay, my, the only reason I might, I, I probably won't, is because I don't currently have my 4K screen. If I still mm. have my 4K screen, then the Xbox One X would be very enticing. So I've got, I've got the prices here, Dan. Um, it's twenty five pounds a month for the Xbox One X, uh, and you get twenty four months of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. So you get. I mean, to be fair, you pretty much get every single game that's on Xbox that's worth playing, minus a few. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's a really good list. It's even better yeah. than the PC one. Yes, yeah, so there's so much stuff on on the Xbox one, and um, and you get a twelve month console upgrade option. I don't know what that means, but that basically means that you don't have to wait the full eighteen months for your contract to finish to upgrade. Ah, uh, yeah, that explains why the eighteen months crossed out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, or the or so that's twenty five pounds a month. Or you can do the same thing with the Xbox One S, uh, which is still a very very good console, and that's twenty pounds a month. Or you can do the same thing with the Xbox One S all digital for eighteen pounds a month. I don't know why anyone would pick the eighteen pound a month one for two pound a month more. You can get the the a, a disc tray, <laughs> like like do you know what I mean? It seems a bit silly to get the all digital one for two pound less. Like if that was like fifteen pound a month, then I'd be bang up for that. I'll probably do that to be fair, but because it's it basically means you're limited to only buying games through Microsoft. So surely, if that's the case, they should make that as cheap as possible because they're getting the most profit out of that one. Surely, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It just seems a bit odd mm-hmm. that that's not that much cheaper. I don't but. know. I don't think I will get the new Xbox because I feel like it is just a bit of a glorified gaming PC. There's not much on the Xbox that isn't on the PC. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I do agree. Yeah, I'm likely to have a PC for the foreseeable future. Uh, the Sony platform potentially because I feel like they've for a long time had far better exclusives, more interesting mm. games. But as we've seen recently, oh, really we've seen have. a lot of those games shift to the PC platform now as well. So I don't know. I'm gonna mm. have to wait and see. I am intrigued about the future of Sony because they've obviously smashed this uh, console generation, but like um, the they're, they're, it feels like they're losing a fair few exclusives now. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like there's, you know, okay, fine. Last of Us Two is coming out on it, but then um, Crash Bandicoot and Sane Trilogy came out on everything, and that's Naughty Dog. Mm-hmm. You know, there's just these little telltale signs of things moving slowly away from them to become broader. But the last you know, few episodes, we've had the, the 
Detroit becoming human announcement and the death yep. the stranding announcement. Yeah, Crystal Dynamics and Kojima Studios both moving away. Mm-hmm. The only one that I feel like they they properly have is Insomniac because they bought them. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but in you know they're, they're the ones that made uh, the Spider Man game. But you know I don't know how long Naughty Dog will last on that console. I feel like to be honest, Naughty Dog are so well received that I if if Xbox paid if Microsoft paid the right amount of money. I don't know how strong the uh, the Naughty Dog allegiance to Sony is. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, so I'm. I don't know. I, th- I think the new consoles are going to blow people's minds. From what I've been reading on a technical spec perspective, mm. I think it's literally going to blow people's minds. How good? It's probably not going to blow our minds, is it? As PC gamers, but <laughs> yeah, uh, not so much. I think even I think we're going to be impressed though. I think people yeah, that are currently yeah, sitting yeah. at home on 1080 NVIDIA cards with, you know, an i7 and this kind yeah, of yeah. thing. I or think Kevin even... sitting at home on his uh, standard definition monitor. <laughs> is it a monitor? No, no sorry, his TV, standard yeah. definition TV that he has plugged into his PC. <laughs> 512K of RAM and a Pentium 3 processor. <laughs> um, and. Here we go. Good times. A good time. Yeah, great. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, seven nanometer architecture. I've said it before. It's gonna blow people away. Seriously, it's gonna. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I'm I'm not a console gamer now. In a year's time, I have a strong feeling that might change. But I I feel like I think in terms of this whole exclusivity thing, Microsoft are doing very very well at the moment. It's just taken them a very long time to find their feet in this generation. They yeah. found it way too late, you know. Because yeah. because this Game Pass thing is amazing. Like everyone loves yeah, it so, so much. Do you know what I mean? They have so much. People have got a lot of faith in them now because of this, and there's that side of it. So I. You know, I've, I would always say that I would get a PlayStation next generation, but after some of the decisions that Sony have been making and some of the decisions that Microsoft have been making this generation, I don't even know what I would get next generation now. Like, I, I genuinely don't know. No, neither do I. You should throw a curveball and get like a... Random oh, number generator. A GameCube. A GameCube? <laughs> what? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Kevin, stay out of this. Sorry, we're talking about tech. Go away. Um, oh... Kevin, can I just ask one quick question before we move on? No, why do you have to? Uh, You're only going to ask this question in order to humiliate me, so... Well, no, it might not humiliate you. What's 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 your... Uh, your you know your computer screen? What's it plugged into in the back of your computer? It, it's plugged in. It's plugged into the uh, game graphics card. God. Uh, all right, cool. Just making sure. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I, I checked that earlier. Yeah, I, I bet you came in, in, came in from work and just ran upstairs like, oh god, oh god, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> no, because didn't I buy a new one? Is that what I bought? The graphics card? I bought a new yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Just making sure that you did yeah. buy a new graphics card and then plug your monitor into that graphics card and not into your motherboard. Because that would be hilarious. <laughs> Classic Kev. Yes. I mean, to be fair, the funny thing about this situation is that, Kevin, you didn't even know that you had to do that, did you? Uh no, I just, I just thought it was a it was a different import. I didn't know it actually went into something particular. <laughs> anyway, and this um, is why there's a market for console gamers because exactly. not everybody's a tech head. Yeah. All right, Dan. Next news story. Next one's a quick fire, pretty much. Red Barrel uh, tease a new game. They haven't announced what it is yet, but I think everyone knows that it's the. I mean, the picture is green, so. <laughs> and it's a that, hand. Yeah. That that implies it's... that it's going to be Outlast Three. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I I'm pretty certain it's Outlast Three. Uh, it's certainly in the Outlast universe. They're saying. Um, yeah. And an announcement is to come very soon. The picture's kind of cool. It's like two hands. One seems to be lifting the other one up from the top. They're like locked. <gasps> Outlast two player potentially. I thought that. Oh yeah. My first oh, thought was that it might be co-op. Um, the other thing that they've said is something about it being. Uh, what, they, what was the words they used? Like an out there experience, or like a different kind of um, extra terrestrial experience, or that not the word they used, but they imply that it might be VR or something. I don't know. Mm. Something like that could that. be really cool. Yeah, you play the game in a different way. Uh, but yeah, co-op was the first thing that came to my mind as well when I saw two hands locked. I didn't even think of that. I just saw green and went, oh, yeah, 
Um, <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. Cool that's stuff. that's exciting. I, I do. I, as long as I don't go down the uh, spooky spooky ghost route spooky again, ghosts. we'll be all right. Spooky, spooky. Um, next <laughs> is Ubisoft announcing. You guys remind me. You guys discussed the basically their apology and their financial statement last week, didn't you? Yes. So, mm -hmm. following on from that, basically Ubisoft have admitted that they ballsed up and they're releasing games far too quickly and all this kind of stuff. Um, what they've now announced is that crossplay is coming to all of their PvP games, and Decent. that they're, it's well on the way supposedly. And their future games will have much more of, I think the word they use was identity or character or something along the lines of they're going to have more um, individual, uh, you know, identity. <laughs> yeah, okay, you know what I'm saying. Mean. I hope. There he is. Yeah, there he is, yeah. boys. The newsman's back. I, yeah, I've literally just got Ubisoft crossplay on my screen. Wait, wait, wait there was something else. Uh, yeah, yeah. So they basically <laughs> want to make them more. You can be unique. a different between the yeah, two. Yeah, instead yeah. of just yeah, unique, churning yeah. out the same game every exactly. year. You, you know how like um, Overwatch has got its own. Damn it! I'm going to say the word identity again. I can't think of another word. It just Aura. You, yeah well, no yeah but no you, you know it just it yeah yeah up. yeah it's, 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 it's got own aura. its own palette and characteristics and personality there you go that's what they're that's what they seem to be going for this time Ubisoft they're gonna put more personality into their games so good luck UB don't yeah, screw no. it up again yeah but to be fair it's nice to see a, a good honest statement like that from a company. Well, it's only honest if they stick to their word, young man. A bit late. They didn't really have a choice because it was a public financial statement. They're a public shareholder. Like, they didn't have a choice. Uh, that's true. It's like, Very true. They had to <laughs> tell people what the hell was going on. And on the back of that, their share price dropped 36% in France. Ooh. It's madness, man. And that segues onto my very last piece of news, which is a percentage gain for Nintendo Switch. Nintendo's. Yeah, I saw this that. Is, this is mad. Mad, mad thing. Nintendo Switch mm. sales That's mine. are up fifty percent since this time last year. Five zero. Ooh. Yeah. That's mad. That's crazy. Oh, that kinda of makes sense actually. Well obviously the light I came was up. I was talking oh. Say it again. Oh Kevin, you were talking. Oh, um I was talking to uh Ryan yesterday. Um and he was wondering about because he he hasn't uh, had a console in a long time and I said to him that he should probably uh, he, like out of all the consoles I know of, he should probably buy a Switch because mm. everyone that's got a Switch loves yeah. them. They they I think they they think they're brilliant and it's and I I would love to get a Switch myself. They they are so, really good things, but I, I think that my issue with the Switch in general is it it it's a, it's a second console. Does that make sense? Well, it's not your main one. It, it can never be one. your main console because why not? Because there's so many things that can't work on it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, Overwatch is apparently just... Oh, like, like, yeah, Overwatch. you know, like Overwatch, Call of Duty, mm -hmm. you know, all these AAA games, or just games that look really nice will not really work on Switch. Single-player games are so much better on them. Like, from, from what I can gather, like, the, the, the multiplayer games just don't seem to work very well on Switch. No, but it's not even that, like, you know, Nintendo are very good at at churning out their uh, their games because they stylize them so much that they don't struggle. If that makes sense to run. Yeah. But then when they try and port other games onto it, they just str it just struggles too much. Like I could think of a million games that in my head would be amazing on Switch, but in reality just wouldn't. Well, Obsidian turned around a little while ago and said that they were massively surprised. Uh, how well the, the Switch ran their new game. Like, they were genuinely blown away by it. But it's, it's still shocking developers. Yeah, but we don't know what their uh, their uh, original expectations were. <laughs> True, but we know that Outer Worlds is coming to the Switch. We know that The Witcher, yeah. which wasn't even developed for it, comes on the Switch and it fits on a single cartridge, which is... Yeah, remarkable. but then I've... You know, and then you've heard two sides of that story. People... Everyone that was expecting it to be terrible on Switch has gone, 
No, it's actually it's actually playable, and you know it's quite nice to have The Witcher on the Switch sort of thing. But then people that didn't really have any expectations turned it on and were like, "This looks horrible." So yeah, it's but it's more the scale and the complexity of the game itself and fitting all of that into one little cartridge. Is, that that is incredible. It's yeah, it's a tech demo, really. Like yeah, it's still fully playable and everything else. But I think it does show that even with this generation of the Switch, we haven't seen the limits of what the console can do but you are then yeah. right in terms of it playing fast paced particularly fast paced um triple a games it's not uh, console for that really the, the, there is a particular so the the switch is my indie machine basically you know the switch is the place to play platforming games that that is the place to play it because you can play it on the move you know there's not uh, so for example if anyone has a switch and a pc and i'm gonna suggest or in the blind forest to them i would say get it on the switch Okay, granted, it looks better on the PC. Yes, it looks amazing on the PC. It looks pretty nice and good on the Switch as well. It's it just the brilliant. fact that you can play it. Yeah, the fact that you can play it anywhere. It's just... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this I, I would highly recommend the Switch to people, but it does depend on what sort of games you want to play. Yes. Because I, I don't... If you're expecting it to be your main console, then I would not recommend it. Like, you well, know, if you're expecting to play you Call play. of Duty and... Yeah, yeah. If you're... If you're Expected to play, I don't know, The Witcher and and uh, Persona Five, and obviously that's exclusive for PS4. But you know, Last of Us are these massive epic games. Then just go for one of the main consoles, PS4 Pro or Xbox One X. Do you think you'll get Pokemon? By the way, Ben. Oh um, yeah, yeah, Shards going it. Which one? Oh god, uh, tell me which one you'll get, and then I'll get the other one. I was literally <laughs> oh, no, the only let's, let's, I was asking this to the same. No, thing. no, we'll, we'll let Charlotte pick because she, she can just she can just look at the animal the, the animals. Oh god, the animals! Jesus Christ, <laughs> the the Pokemon. Sorry, uh, and just whichever one she likes to look of, she'll get that one, and then I'll tell cool, you. Yeah, one. let me know as soon, especially if she's pre-ordering. Let me know ASAP. I kind yeah, yeah. I kind of want the still book. Not gonna lie. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I think that's it. I think that's all for news that I have. Uh, Switch Sweet sales up fifty percent. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, it. quite a slow week, really. But it has been a slow week, and I know I've been a bit off form with moving house and everything. But generally, yeah, but there wasn't. I mean, I, I check the news every day. I, 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 you know, send news to the show notes and stuff. But there wasn't really anything, to be honest. No, like the, the big news of this week was was is BlizzCon is happening. Yeah, I guess the issue is that because we record on a Friday, BlizzCon's happening over the weekend. That's going to be next week's news. So it's yeah. kind of yeah. Oh no. Um. Mm. Right. So. Onto what we've been playing. Cool. Mm. Kev, what the hell? I was, I'd said that so you'd flip. You missed it, you mug. Yeah. <laughs> you missed it again. No, no, I did it on purpose because I wanted Kevin to rage, but he didn't. So he oh. just completely <laughs> bottled it. Oh. Um, all right, let me just get my list up. Excuse me? Huh? Excuse me? Well, I need what to, I need to check your while you're doing yours. Yeah. You need to be oh proof. proof is Kevin like what's happened to Kevin? I just realised he hasn't said anything in no, ages. Yeah, no, he, he's just gone to before the podcast. <laughs> 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 All right, so I'm Kevin, you're doing this belly. Monday to Sunday, yeah? Yeah, so the fifty eleventh, yeah, forty eleventh. Okay, so just dance twenty twenty is coming out. Dance, Hell dance. Yeah. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to get your groove on, if you want to lose a bit of weight, I probably should myself. <laughs> Just dance is your. Get the uh... fit. Yeah. What? No. <laughs> Just dance. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kevin, you're supposed to be announcing these games, not promoting them. That's how. That yeah. sounded oh, like sorry. an all we, all we need uh, is just sort of like some upbeat music in the background. Like, do you want to lose weight? <laughs> <laughs> Join me next week. Join me, oh, Kevin Hart, next week. 2020. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. And one, and two, <laughs> and one. <laughs> Uh, uh, we also have Garfield Kart Furious oh, Racing. Yeah, man. Madman game coming out. Oh, it's out on the Switch. Coming out. Yeah. All right, I said I changed my mind. Ryan, get a Switch. Hype. <laughs> it's coming out on PC as well, man. We could all yeet this yeah, up. One v one, one v one me Switch. I'm sorry, John. Um. 
Mario Sorry, and John. Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympics is coming out on Switch. Um, I don't know if this is a, if this is a, like a big game, but Val Faris is coming out on PS4. Yeah, it's quite. It's quite a platform, we didn't get a chance game. to play that at EGX. It looked really cool. No, it looked really popular though. Yeah, it's basically like a side scroll shooting indie indie game. I nearly called it an Indian game then. Um, and but it's like heavy metal, like a Doom spoof sort of thing, where you like your character like head banging and whatnot, and it's. Hopefully, he headbangs into a time with me. Oh, <laughs> yeah, God, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I guess probably one of the bigger ones this week is Red Dead Redemption 2. It's coming out PC. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Planet Zoo is coming out on PC. Yeah. Uh, Conception Plus, Maidens of the. Kev, are you on the giant bomb list? No. Oh, Did you just say conception? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Conception. Conception. Are you no, sure it... that's what it's called? Ben, what's it called? It looks like. I, I, honestly, that's what I can read it as. Ben, are you still there? Yeah, yeah hold on, hold on. Please, is, is he right? He might. I mean, he might be right. I've never heard of a. I've never heard of conception. <laughs> Sounds like an interesting game. Um. So Kevin, I don't think he likes missing things, so he's just reading out all of them now. Um, <laughs> and Conception Two is a game where you basically have to find a woman yeah. and have hanky panky with her, <laughs> and then raise a family to. Uh... It's an RPG. Sure. Yes, yeah, an RPG. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's basically like one of those hentai games that's on Steam. Oh my god. Yeah. Cheers for that, Kev. Yes, if anyone wants to play Conception 2, that's coming out this week, guys. <laughs> no, it's Conception plus Maidens of the 12 Stars. 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, there's a lot of stars. Yeah, you got you get, your, you get your pick of the hanky-panky in this one. Yeah. Um, a Year of Rain is coming out on PC. What's that, Kev? Uh, it's a strategy game. Um, Construction Simulator 2 is coming out on the Switch. Big oh stuff. Gosh. Get yourself some building, make yourself a construction. This is supposed to be one of the most boring um, games ever made. <laughs> Jumanji, the no, video game. This coming is not out. even based on the game, it's based on the, the recent film with what's his name in it, The Rock. Hell yeah. It's based on that. It and looks the so stone. terrible. I can't wait. Um Bon me. Disney Tsum Tsum Festival. What coming Disney out on what? Switch? <laughs> what? God, Kev. It literally said Tsum Tsum. Tsum 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 Tsum. What are you saying? T S U M. T S U M. Tsum 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 November 8th. Next Friday, boy. I thought that was out already. I've seen all the reviews, but I guess Oi. that was just review copies. Yeah. Did I just see that right? Need for Speed Heat is coming out. Yep. It looks PS4, crap. PC, and Xbox One. It's pretty dope. New hot game coming out. Truck Driver coming out on PC. Oh God, he's literally... People he's love them games, don't they? everything, man. <laughs> no, people love them games, don't they? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I'm, I'm sure... I've, Pretty sure it's got like a fan base of about the equivalent of Disney Tsum Tsum Festival. <laughs> you are the biggest <laughs> ass. <laughs> I actually love Euro Truck Simulator too. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> um, is there any more I've missed, Ben? Uh, Wait, don't tell you're only on like the twelfth or something. You've still got like the rest of the month to go, surely. No, it's the I'm week. i the month, I'm doing the week. Oh, yeah. Uh, you've missed... Yeah, come on. No, don't say you it. missed two. Do you think I've missed some? Okay, is Romancing Saga one? No. <laughs> no. Is Leighton's Mystery Journey? Yes. Uh, yeah, that one. That's on, coming out on the Switch on the 8th it. of November. It's an adventure game. It's probably an indie game, because they all are. Um. No. 
Oh, what? Seriously? The one time? Yes. Um, Have you not heard of Professor Layton sh- before? Professor Layton? Dan, have you heard of Professor Layton? I don't think so, no. Oh, it's like a massive Nintendo franchise. What does he look like? I don't know, they're like puzzle games. Really? You guys have never heard of Professor Layton? I don't think so. It's not the brain training thing, is it? No, no, no. no. It's, a, <laughs> it's There's like tons of them. There's like loads on all, through all the DSs and stuff. Nope. No? Okay, cool. Charlotte's <laughs> played them. But I mean, they're they're supposed they're very popular, so it oh. must be alright. That's like all the ones I've got, man. Uh, and Super Lucky's Tale is the last one. Okay, no joke here. I just clicked on that, and it says nothing about it. It says there's no publisher, there's no. Well, it says about the developer, but there's nothing about it. There's not even a picture for Remember, it. So, you know these sections that we do. You know you're supposed to prepare for them, yeah. I do prepare for them, do but you? then it to me it looks like a nothing game because every, all, all the all the big ones have pictures and stuff. All the important ones have pictures. This one doesn't even have a picture. I'm very simple, guys. Okay, I look at pictures. All right, guys, watch this. I just I just typed it in on uh, Google. Super Lucky's Tale is a 3D platformer video game developed by Playful Corp and published by Microsoft Studios for Windows 10 and Xbox One. It's a sequel to Super to Lucky's Tale, a virtual 3D platformer for the Oculus Rift. The game was released as launch title for Xbox One on November 7th. That was hard, wasn't it? Um, Wait, you, you're you're you literally on one website Google? and you're just like, it hasn't got a picture. So it's got no information. Just type the name in and Google, you mong. Well, I'm not typing while we're doing no, this. In in advance. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. You're supposed to prepare for these in advance. I have prepared. How have you prepared? I got the website up. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, man. Dan, thank you for all of the hard work that you put into this podcast. I really appreciate it. Thank you very no, much. It's a Dan. Yeah, exactly. Dan the man Kev. <laughs> um <laughs> That's it, yeah. That's it, yeah. All right. Uh, that's Kevin's wonderful section. I, I basically oh, just I let, I let you keep this one so that you don't push for Kevin's rants again. Um, you know what? I might just drop it in, put it in myself. Uh, no. No stopping me. No stopping me now. Right. We'll, we'll see, Kev. We'll see. Um, just bear right. in mind that me and Dan do the editing, not you. <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, right, so what have we been playing? Dan, you were off last week, so short straw again. Uh, do you want to? Do you want me to get Charlotte now, or do you want me to get Charlotte when we talk about? Do you, let's do what remains at the end, yeah, and we'll, we'll talk about them. Okay, cool. Uh, so I have played two games in total this week, mainly because I haven't had an internet connection for a week. So <laughs> the two games that I've played are very similar, in a way. The first one is on my Switch because I wanted something that's kind of mindless to play. It is a game that many of you Conception have... Two. Conception One, actually. I wanted to make sure I understood the narrative. The um, law, yeah, yeah. Before I played the second one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that really got me then. I was like, what? Oh, really? <laughs> uh, it's Torchlight Two. Yeah. Oh, oh, I love you, that oh, game. Okay, oh. cool. All right, well, get it, get a switch and get Torchlight Two, Kevin. We can play. Oh, I played it on PC years yeah, ago. Yeah, it's, it's kind of an old game now. I played it a bit on PC as well, but I never really got into it because I always went back to Diablo. Um, but I think I was kind of like feeling like playing an action RPG and you know, a bit of a looting game on the go, like in the car on the way to the new house and that. And uh, looked at Diablo on the store, and then remembered that. Blizzard have been assholes recently, and I was like, "Yeah, screw you, Blizzard! I'm going to buy Torchlight instead." Again, so I bought Torchlight instead, and yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, it's a funky, whimsical, loot-based action RPG with skeletons and goblins and stuff. It's a lot harder than Diablo Three, yeah. I think. Um, I, I find it really a bit tricky. Yeah, yeah, you kind of have to kite. Well, I, kite I do want to more. play it again. I, I might pick it up on the Switch at some point because I have I have played it years ago, but not. I only I probably only played a couple of hours of it. It was before, before the time where I really understood what the purpose of those sorts of games were. If that makes sense. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know if I would recommend it to most people, but it. I think I've said this a few times on the podcast. My Switch library 
is like one game to scratch each different type of itch that I get. Mm. And I was just missing like a portable loot based grind. Yeah, that that's like the key word, isn't it? Loot. Just something where you can just sort of find random loot and upgrade your character it's, and yeah. that it's sort a, of vibe. I feel like it was a very, very fun multiplayer game. Yeah, it's not as fun solo at all, as you can imagine. Yeah, because I, I started playing the game with a bunch of other people and they, they all kind of got a bit, like, kind of bored of it because it is, it is very grindy. Very. Um, yeah, they got bored of it and I carried on playing on my own and I was like, I really like this game, but it just doesn't have that same kick yeah. on your own. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, I, I'm, I struggle to recommend it, but I must say that the people that ported it, I'm drawing a blank on their name. They're a pretty one of them studio that port games have done a remarkable job of porting it because they ported it to all consoles at the same time like switch and playstation and that so it wasn't like a mm. um, it wasn't a pc to ps4 and then two years later the switch it was a pc to consoles in general port all at once and it plays really really nicely actually um considering it wasn't built for a controller from the get-go yeah no, that's good. yeah it's good it's fun it's colorful it's easy to play um, very nice little handheld game, but yeah, Diablo Four, please. It's a bit dated now. Uh, <laughs> the other game I've been playing, which Kevin mentioned last week, so I'll try not to rant too much about it, is the wonderful, the beautiful, one of my favorite games of this year, <laughs> Borderlands Three. I love so much. Turns out you can play it <laughs> offline. So when well, I didn't have an internet oh. connection. I opened up the Epic Game Launcher and it was like, eh, sorry, you got to be signed in to play Borderlands. And I was like, oh, bugger, I haven't wanted to play that. Then I went to my library and I saw Borderlands. I was like, I'm going to try again. So I clicked on it and it worked. So, But it does oh. like some weird stuff, like it trolls you a little bit. And the, the game developers are like, eh, you're playing it offline. You suck. And it kind of makes all of your really colorful things brown. Like it goes, uh, you like yeah. that yellow and blue and green skin that you've put on your vehicle no it's brown now every time we play the game we're just going to make it brown <laughs> um, and just little things like that and there's also i think there's like certain types of loot you can't get in certain but, but anyway i love it so much i don't know how far you've got kevin because i remember you saying in your in last week's episode that you were worried that you'd be a bit ahead of me um yeah how far into it are you <laughs> uh have you completed oh, it i don't know how much to say okay what was the boss you no, just i haven't completed it uh, it was like a devil type dragony thing that smashes up a whole area. Oh, you basically finished it. I've I've I completed it. Yeah. What? Seriously? Yeah, but I played it differently to you, remember? And this gets me onto my point. I wanted to bring up with you, Ben. So Hello. you were saying last week, Kevin, that you do all the little oh, side missions yeah. and level up because it gets really hard. When I play Borderlands, I'm like, nah, 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 nah. I just want to finish the story. And then play it properly on the second playthrough. I want the end game content. And in the last episode, Ben, you were like, "Oh yeah, what's the point in end game <laughs> content? Why would you just want to play the same game again?" And to me, solid end game is like one of the most important things in any online game at all. Like full stop. Mm. Like, I think it's fair to say that the new Outer Worlds game. I haven't played it, but the- I have. I know you have, <laughs> but the way that have you have you completed it yet? No, no, no. So one of the things that I have read, and this is all over the place, so this isn't spoiling it, is when you finish the game, you get an ending, right? And then that's it. Like you finish the game, you get an ending, and that's it. There's no going back. There's no going to the areas that you missed, and you know, doing side missions and stuff. Yeah, but it's off your plate. It's done. You reach the end of the game and that's it. Which is fair enough, and that's a nice contained experience and the game's designed in a way that you can play through it again and take the evil route instead of the good one or whatever. For me, Borderlands is such a perfect game when it comes to endgame content because, yeah, it's grindy and you're shooting the same enemies again and you're going through the same content again for the most part, but... There's something just really nice for me when I play games like this in just tweaking your character and making minor adjustments and perfecting different loadouts and builds and collecting but, all of your favorite things. But for what purpose? 
because I mean, okay, here's one example. The very first boss in the game, which I love. I absolutely love the first <laughs> boss in this game. Hey, it is epic. Thrusting music all the way through it is great. <laughs> um, the second playthrough is called uh, Vault Hunter, True Vault Hunter Mode, I think it's called. And I've always loved this in all of the Borderlands games. But I fought this boss, and it took me like three or four times as long as the first playthrough. It was a lot harder. So I was finding yeah, do, I was finding I? myself having to duck and weave around obstacles and jump over attacks and like actually calculate all the things that were going on rather than just melting his face. And also, wait, have you started the second play for already? A little bit, yeah. Oh man, I, I feel I feel like we should we should yeah, hold together. Oh, yeah. I can link up with you at this point. I'm happy. To it's, it's, it's me. Like I'm, I'm like holding back a little bit. I'm thinking, oh, I don't want to get too far ahead. And then like he's like, oh yeah, man, I've played it twelve oh, times. <laughs> Yeah, so I couldn't hold back. I, I had nothing Wait, else to play that worked offline that I wanted to play, apart from one other game that I should have been playing, but I just didn't have the capacity. I just wanted to play something that was half mindless, but yeah. But yeah, this boss fight took like four times as long, and the soundtrack from that fight that I initially loved turns out to be even better like 10 minutes into the songs because it's like a proper mix mastered sequence of tunes that just mixes together perfectly and all the different stages of the boss fight protrude more and yes it's the same content but you're more into it the second time around you know i'm spending more time looking at my environments and checking little things out and assets and posters on the wall because i'm like i don't have to focus on the story and driving forward to the next mission i can just be in the moment and just do what i want to do here and now and i love it i love like respecting my character I'm finding that a shield that I picked up 20 levels ago fits perfectly into a build that I'm going to make in three levels time. And I love end game content. I think it's the best part of these shared experiences online. It's where the good stuff happens. The end game of Borderlands, in my opinion, is 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 very good in terms of being able to make your character. I like I touched on it last week. You know, I'd, I'd I'd love to use all these little points and make my character so I can sit back and snipe and get these really cool headshots and stuff. But then knowing that it doesn't make any difference to what character I pick or what I do or what what um, attribute tree I go down because they don't actually cater to what I want to play. It's only at the end, of, once I've finished it, that it does that. Uh. My only problem is, is that I have literally, I have completed every single side mission so That's far. What you completely, yeah. Have you, have you done the um, the one with the uh, dinosaur? No. <laughs> but this oh, is why mate. I'm looking forward well, to my second it, playthrough. It isn't the one with the dinosaur. It's just you, you get the um, mission from a dinosaur. <laughs> I think it's a Halloween thing, you know. I could be wrong, but there's a lot of pumpkin head people. Unless they just stick them on the characters because it's Halloween, yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah, that'd be quite, there is a quite cool. With that. That's what I do. Um, yeah, I'm absolutely adoring Borderlands Three at the moment. I feel like I'm gonna like play yeah. a lot more of it. Um, it's just a fully contained game with no loot boxes, no bullshit. Just a really well designed, awesome game. You know that um, that one mission where you uh, Ellie gives you that car, and you have to take the car from like yeah. a. And you have to Runs go through it, kill everything yeah. to, yeah. That gave me real like uh, Halo esque <laughs> music. Oh yeah, while yeah, it was yeah, playing, sure. because could, do you remember the bit in it where she spe- uh, someone specifically gets in the car and says, "Oh, I wonder what kind of music this car has." Pushes the button, and it goes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and it's oh, just oh, like it's going. You're talking about yeah, you're talking about the one yeah. later in the game towards the end and then there's like a proper radio station playing with a playlist of tunes with vocals and stuff right yeah, yeah exactly, exactly i was so was, upset yeah. i didn't realize how into that moment i was until my car exploded and suddenly i was just standing yeah. in silence and there was no music and i was like and things were shooting me and i was like oh what i just restarted the whole mission all right uh, i'm gonna put i'm gonna I... put the brakes on here you guys are being very <laughs> ambiguous about this <laughs> Sorry, such... uh, this is like the sort of conversation that that like <laughs> <laughs> I have honestly no idea what any of you two are talking about, and ninety oh, percent of our listeners won't either. I'm so. sorry, guys. Um, yeah, no, the... get sorry. <laughs> 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 
Oh, the bit, that bit with the thing. Yeah, the bit with that bit. Yeah, the bit where you're driving and he presses the button and it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just like, what are you talking about? There's basically a really epic vehicle sequence. I mean, vehicle, the driving in Borderlands isn't that amazing, but what makes this moment for me is the music. You jump into one of the character's cars, which is just like every other car in the game, really. And then one of the other people in the car goes like, oh, I wonder what music this character listens to and turns their radio on. And obviously the in-game soundtrack is the same as what's playing on the radio. And you've got all this like crazy hype music happening and all these explosions happening around you. And it's, it's like a really epic scene, but yeah. See, that, that was better. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was that just explain, getting into it. I'm so excited that. about this. I think that's the, uh, <laughs> the difference between my description and Dan's description. <laughs> <laughs> Bioshock, <laughs> Keeper of the Lighthouse. Um, yeah, those are the only two games apart from the other one that we'll talk about later that I have played. But I must say, Borderlands 3 could be contender for Game of the Year for me, personally, right now. That's uh, for you, but we have to come up with a podcast Game of the Year, Dan. Do so we though? Gonna... Why can't I have a yeah. personal Game of the Year? Cause... Well, you can, but it's not to be announced on the podcast, because we need a podcast Game of the Year. Do we? Is that is that what people do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's what we do. That's what the, that's what you know. What the, the pickle is a game. So right at the end, we have to praise the pickle at the end of every year yeah. for praising the best games. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, there's has been a lot of games out this year, and I'm um I'm not going to allow Borderlands Three to win. So why not? It's really good. Leave that to Game of the Year. Leave that to Game okay, of the Year. Sorry. Come on. Yeah. All right, sorry. Okay. sorry. <laughs> what have you guys we can been fight playing? over them. Uh, go on, Kev. Oh, Dan, did you want to talk about... No, we'll talk about it. Go on. Yeah. Um, so, played... Well, I've, I've Borderlands for you with, with, with Rinsed. Um, too much. Played a bit of Overwatch yesterday with uh, the Barra Brothers. Boys. Wait, Kevin, um, sorry, Kevin what, was it, what was his surname? The Barra Brothers. Oh, okay, cool. That's, that's their uh, code name. Um, <laughs> and. Things <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and. Well, it's the same old Overwatch. And it's just. It's, I absolutely love that game when playing with other people yeah that's uh, good until and until, you know what I, I, I find with certain kind of games I enjoy playing them for a little bit but then when when I play them a lot I get more and more competitive and then I just get angry and get annoyed and turn it off because I think it's crap that's just I, that's like a, a cycle I go around fair enough mainly because I'm not very good <laughs> Um, and I downloaded PUBG on Xbox again <laughs> sorry go on. Uh, didn't we talk about this in one of the earlier episodes and one of you said that it was the game that you've probably installed and deleted more times than any other game. That's me. <laughs> well, I, 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 I didn't really re-download it. I just updated it on my Xbox. Um, and I'm still as crap as I ever was before. The game has improved, though, since I last played. How, uh, what, how long in, does it take to load buildings in now? Like, by the time you hit the floor, they've loaded. Well, you, so, know, you got that. So you mean, like, the... About a few minutes well I mean for me it's an improvement because I mean half the time you just get stuck in walls and stuff so fantastic game man um I only played about three or four games and got one kill which I was very excited about uh, what else have they improved Kevin since the last time you played it yeah go on you can throw you can throw frying pans at people now wow game of the year um <laughs> yeah you know screw it I know it didn't come out this year but that I think that update is big enough to basically make it a new game so you can vault um that that's been a thing for years but okay not years it not hasn't in... been around that long it's been around no, for no quite as in long as time. in as in like as in like you can you can jump to a building and then if you don't make it with your feet your, your guy grabs onto it and pulls himself yeah, up yeah vaulting has been on PUBG for ages not that long no it has been it's for been ages. it's no it's been vaulting has been in PUBG as in like you can walk up to something and then jump over the other side but you can't jump from one building to another and if you don't make it your guy holds on and grabs on and then pulls himself up that's never been a thing it's only been a thing so for you like... can grab onto ledges yeah but you can like like almost uncharted style you can leap from one building to another then grab onto a window ledge and then like 
Yeah. There's a lot... The word can was used in there. I'm sure, like, if you hit it at just the right angle, you probably can. No, it's but no, pretty in, good, actually. No, in typical PUBG fashion, it'll either be... <laughs> you'll either just completely just plummet into the brick wall and just die instantly and then get flinged like a ragdoll across the map or something. <laughs> or you'd just jump and then get stuck halfway into the top of the building and just be floating there for the rest of the game. <laughs> I mean, it's just a terrible game, man. So much salt. It's not salt. It's terrible. Okay. <laughs> I want to say that Ben's never won a game of PUBG before. No, I've won loads. He probably hasn't. I, I've won what games no, of you. Me and Ben won our very first game, yeah. didn't we? The very first game I played, Leo. We won it. I got the final kill. Yeah. That, was, that was mad. I enjoyed that. Uh, it, re- it does really upset me that people still play PUBG when Call of Duty Black Ops 3 is out there and it's so much better. Not Black Ops 4. And years. Apex Legends is out there, which is like sick as well. Me- very mediocre Apex, in my opinion, but yeah. Um, Ooh, that's going to upset many, many people. That's fine. Bring yeah. it. I didn't like it either, to, it, to be honest. Why? What's bad about I the game? I love the movement, and I love the gunplay, and I love pretty much everything about the visuals and the, the feeling of it, but it was about Royale. Yeah. <laughs> No, that's it, what you don't like about it. It came it. out at the wrong time. If Apex Legends was the first Battle Royale to come out, it would have been like, amazing, if you know what I mean. It just came out after just, you know, Battle Royale year where it was. Yeah, but, like, it, but it's, it, was, it was like the best one that's come out. No, I mean, to be fair, Fortnite is probably the best one, isn't it? In reality. I mean, Fortnite, Fortnite did steal things from that game. From Apex? Yeah. Fortnite okay. borrows things from everywhere. And then Apex stole things from there. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, no, yeah, no, no they, they created... No, they, in fact, I'm pretty no. sure Apex Legends created the Battle Royale genre. Mm. Yeah, they yeah, did. Yeah. You know, the dropping out of a plane thing at the start, that was just Apex Legends. But, you know, I, PUBG I they, stole that one. They it's, coined the term Battle Royale. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It used to be called Battle Royale until everyone started yeah, I remember, Battle Royale, so they changed their name to Apex Legends. I, I've also heard um, Apex Legends has this really unique thing where the uh, the there's like a circle and you can't go outside the circle and then it gets smaller oh, and smaller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. When you start in like a, a plane or something, you actually drop into the map at the start. Yeah, so you can like pick where you want to go. Like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And you you find your equipment on the map, right? Like rather than yeah, it's just like lying in buildings. And, and yeah, stuff. and the equipment has yeah. different levels as well. Yeah, that sounds actually that sounds like a really unique concept. I wouldn't mind uh, trying no, that. No. Sounds like um, exactly. you know what's, what was that old uh, Japanese movie based on the mangas called? Uh, um, um, oh, um, ba- Battle Royale, son. Battle Royale, that was it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the original Battle Royale manga. Yeah. <laughs> what was that accent? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was that? So, uh, All right, I'll, I feel like we've been doing this little bit for about half yeah, an hour now. <laughs> so, Kevin, you're wrong. Did it, these are the things I think I really wish we like would cut out. <laughs> so stupid. Why would you want to cut that out? That was that's like, all I've been. That's content. One hundred percent original oh. content, right there. That's, that's pure, right. pure praise. All right, shut up, Paul. Uh, Kev, you done? Yeah. Cool. That was a lovely noise. That, that's, that's great. That sounded yeah. great that's... in my ears on the way to work. This yeah. Morning. Yeah. Um so I've been playing <laughs> I've been playing uh Outer Worlds. I haven't played much this week because I've been playing something else. Uh, but it is still very, very, very good. And Yay. yeah. I'm not gonna talk about it much more. I've spoken about it already, so I won't talk about it much more. But um give it a whirl if you haven't played it. And the next game I've been playing is the uh, 2017 classic Mario Odyssey. Oh, cool. You picked it up again. Yay! Yeah, so Charlotte, me and Charlotte, well, Charlotte completed uh, Link's Awakening, and then we're like, oh, what should we play next? And we're like, let's try a Mario game, because we didn't really, I don't think well, we Why don't were... you get Luigi? Hold on, was... hold on. I'm just going to sound rude. Hold oh, sorry. on. Stop jumping the gun, Kev. Mind Ben. Um... Yeah, so we thought we'd give it a go because you know we haven't played it in a while and we didn't really it didn't really click with us at first, and we just love it now and we're 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 basically uh, trying to rush through it for the end game content. Um, 
<laughs> no, no, no. See, I, 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 it might sound like a joke, but we are, we are actually doing that. Oh. We're rushing through all of the worlds, and then we're going to go back and do each world one at a time and get all of the Oh, rooms. yeah, that's, that's how I play Mario as well. Go back and get yeah. all the stars and all the costumes yeah. and stuff. So, yeah, but it's so good. The environments in that game are amazing. It's just, yeah. it's, yeah, it's like nearly on par with Mario Galaxy right now. So, oh, wow. Yeah. Um, We'll see if it gets a lot harder, then it'll probably be on par with it. But I don't remember it because it's quite hard. easy, isn't it? I mean, some of the stars will be really hard to get. Wait, have you completed it? Um, I think I completed the main worlds, but I know there's more to unlock. How many moons have you got? Do you remember? No, because there's like like hundreds, like I know. three, yeah, yeah, so I'm three saying, or five hundred. I'm, I'm not even yeah. close to that. I've got enough to progress through each of the main maps. I think there's a couple of like yeah. secret worlds you can unlock, which I haven't got yet as mm. well. Um, yeah, so that that's, um, but apparently some of the, the when you start getting to the later moons, it gets really hard. Where you have to do like your, you know, backflip, throw the hat, dive onto yeah. it, throw the hat, and then wall bounce, throw the hat again, and then bounce off. You know, just crazy combinations yeah. like yeah. freaking Street Fighter game. Um, but yeah, loving it. And I forgot how nice the Switch games look on a big screen. So I've been so used to playing it in handheld. I was like, because it's, you have motion controls in it, which are actually quite nice. So if we, we play it on the big screen. Obviously, there's two of us playing it, so we don't be hunched over this little handheld. Yeah. And I forgot how nice it looks on there, man. It crisp as hell. It looks so good. Yeah, they've done a great job of that. Yeah. So 60 FPS all good. through as well, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. 100%. No things. Um, so that's all I've been playing this week. But... We did uh, pre-order Luigi's Mansion. Ooh. Oh, yeah. So, because uh, I've been excited to play it for ages. Yeah, me too, actually. Uh, and um, oh, Dan, I mentioned last week we're lending you Zelda. Yeah. Oh, don't. Thank you, but don't do it yet. I've got too much right, to cool. play right now. Give it to. Yeah. Uh, I think you said George wanted to play it as well. Okay. Cool. 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 Yeah. Um, cool. 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 Uh, yeah, so we've we've ordered Luigi's Mansion, but we haven't mm. actually played it yet because we were like, let's complete Mario Odyssey first, and then we're gonna play it. So fair doozy. Yeah, looking forward to playing that. Aren't you, Charlotte? Yeah. Oh my God, where did you come from? Hey! That's right. She snuck yeah. in like that so we could talk about what remains of Edith Finch. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right. So I am gonna quickly sort out my thing. Dan, would you like to explain what Edith Finch is? I will do my best. Um, let's try and keep this like minimal on spoilers because I really would love people to try this and experience it firsthand. It's what people are calling these days a walking simulator. But I don't think that's a fair description of what this game is. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since I played it now, but the story is you play as someone who is reading the diary of somebody called Edith Finch. And she is part of a large family of people whose line goes back several generations who have a self-proclaimed curse that they all basically die in horrific, not horrific, not like horror horrific, but very unfortunate ways. And unfortunate, yeah. Yeah, that's probably the... yeah. and it's, it's, you know, some of them very sad but basically the gameplay is you exploring the house that was made by these people uh, by this family of people and uncovering the secrets of their stories and unraveling what's happened to them and how they all are connected to each other and that's a pretty okay summary. yeah 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 yeah, for sure. yeah that's good to, to start us off yeah yeah, yeah. um so if it, those of you that haven't listened to the podcast before, Charlotte is here. Hi. Um, Charlotte is my wife, and she plays games with me occasionally. And sometimes, sometimes. And why are you talking so? Oh, quiet? what a wife you've got there, aren't you? <laughs> He's very lucky. <laughs> um, so yeah, everyone, this is Charlotte. Charlotte, say hi to everyone. Hello, everyone. Hello, go. Charlotte. Hey. The third hello. I'm yes. just making sure so that funny. I've introduced her because we segue <laughs> so well into her presence 
but I realised that people might not even know who she is. It's just random. You've like unsegwayed it as well. Now. Oh, whatever. Get out. If we add um, one new person every week, then in a few months we can have a podcast with like 15 people in it. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll definitely be able to hello, keep it on the table. Hello. hello. <laughs> um, all right, cool. So, Charlotte, what did you think? I thought it was so good. Yeah. Emotional. Oh, yeah. Like, very emotional. I think I cried at one point. Yeah, you definitely did. Yeah, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so. It was just very beautiful as well. Like, the detail they put in it. Like, it's not, it's not like, action-y or anything. You're just sort of walking around, aren't you? Yeah. It's boring. Yeah. Mostly just walking around. I mean, obviously, there are some very, very interesting mm. um, shifts in gameplay for certain stories. It's clever, though. Like, it's inventive and... Very inventive, yeah. Yeah, inventive is definitely the word I'd use to describe it. Like, every single... They... Basically, you go into the bedroom of each family member. Yeah. When you're trying to put together this family tree. And uh, you open their, their diaries that are all, all in each room. Mm-hmm. And then when you open it up, the story basically plays out. But they use different like artistic mediums for it. Yeah, yeah. every single just... one's completely different. Yeah. Yeah. Really well done. I think um, the one that everyone talks about in reviews and things, this is kind of all over the internet, is the the first one with the, the youngest kid um, with the animal fever dreams. Yeah. Or oh, the baby. I think it's a baby, yeah, no, essentially. No, no, the oh. kid um, when you play oh, as the cat. Oh, the girl. Then, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very young yeah, child, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so no, no, no. This not is not the one that baby. people spoil quite a lot. So I think we oh. can get away with spoiling this one, but I don't want to spoil any more than that. But I think it's maybe yeah. a good way to explain how strange and creative this game gets. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. so I'll just briefly frame it. Um, so when you read the diaries, you basically jump into the perspective of the person going through these events and often it's like the last account of what they experienced in their life uh, and this child that you suddenly start playing as is very young how old would you say she was four or five or something i don't know it's hard to say isn't it it'll tell yeah, you because yeah. it has like a birth and death date in there somewhere but yeah charlotte was intrigued by the birth and death dates she was like trying to put together the family tree herself oh, <laughs> yeah the, historian, okay. the, the chronological but, aspect yeah, yeah. Um, they interest me. <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was yeah, a very interlinking story of various events and things. But basically, you jump into this child, you're in your room, you've been locked up in your room by your parent because they're upset with you and they told you to skip dinner. Kind of a traditional mm-hmm. but pretty cruel punishment. And you're a kid walking about and you're basically saying, look, I'm so hungry, I really, I was trying to find something to eat and I ate everything that I could find and it's got all these really intricate kind of um, and you eat like toothpaste and yeah, you squeeze food yeah and... hamster food. At one point, there's like I think you look at your hamster and the the icon to eat your hamster pops up for a moment. But as you get close to it, it like just little things like that. Like I thought about yeah. it, but it was never actually going to happen. But they show it in a really interesting gaming way. And then you eat some berries from like a ornamental holly bush or something that you've got by the window. And then you get into bed, and the next thing you know, you are you shift into the perspective of your cat who's outside the bedroom window and then you just go on this crazy trippy journey like first you're a cat jumping around in trees and chasing a bird and it's, then... it starts off fairly like right okay so i'm a cat now fine yeah yeah and then you're a bird an owl or something and it's like okay cool oh you're catching rabbits and maybe. then just suddenly you're a shark, shark. rolling down a hill <laughs> right you're, yeah you're a shark on land <laughs> <laughs> I just remember me and Charlotte were playing what? this because obviously you, you bought it for us and we yeah. were just like and then th- we were playing this bit just flopping about as a yeah. shark thinking why on earth is Dan, does yeah. Dan want us to play yeah. this game like yeah. what that was my first reaction yeah. to playing that moment as well because I'd heard it was a pretty interesting game and I was like oh, this is a bit weird and then, and then you play as like that weird tentacle sea creature type of thing yeah you play as like the Kraken or something yeah like it's super yeah. bizarre and a little bit creepy but that gameplay element is completely contained within itself for this one story and it lasts yeah. like five to ten minutes of maximum and then it's over and then there's never that code that game design that they use to play out that particular story is never used again mm. like there's no mm. more animal control mechanics there's no more animal animations or birds in fields and rabbits in field like that's but that's the theme that runs throughout the game is mm. each story is such 
uh, an individual piece of art in itself that none of it feels recycled or reused. Yeah, um, it's I think done. that's the main the main thing that makes this game so good is how unique every story is. Yeah, I think, but I I, I don't want to say anything else about it if I'm honest because mm. it's a really short game. Like it says yeah. like two or three hours. It's or a something. one sitting like, game. Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone should just play it. Oh yeah, it. we played it in like. An evening, not yeah. even an evening, like half yeah. an evening. It's yeah. like just play it instead of watching a movie. Yeah. It's, not, it's not difficult. You can't lose it. You know, it's just playing out a story, basically. Yeah, it's not hard. It, it basically tells you what to do all the time. You, you don't mm. really have to walk around and work out complicated puzzles or anything like that. Mm. It all kind of flows together and makes sense. But yeah, I think the first thing that you said, Charlotte, was the attention to detail in these environments mm. is absolutely stunning. Like, just being able to look at the cookbooks that these family would read and look at all the books on the shelves and the, the portraits and the pictures and the art and just yeah, the way that I, things are placed I, I on had tables. That moment, oh, it's stunning. I had that moment where I went down a ladder and saw all the books. And I was like, this house looks so detailed. And then I saw this book. You climb down a ladder and there's like a bookshelf behind it. Yeah. So I thought, I wonder if they repeat the same books over and over again and went over to it and every single book was completely different yeah. with a different title or different author and, and everything. The house and it was like, full of books as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think I think the other thing they do really well is explore emotion in some of the stories. Yeah. Won't go into it, but yeah. it just gives such an amazing perspective on mm. some of the stuff that people can go through and what people experience in life and Oh, it's just so good. And <laughs> it, There's a couple which will like sit with me forever. Yeah, yeah definitely. I was, gonna, I was just about to say that. I was just about to say that there are some particularly helps you, haunting. Yeah. Helps you understand things. Mm. I think. Yeah, no, I think that's a fair thing to say. They wouldn't, they wouldn't do it for the fun of doing it. You no. know, it wasn't. Some of these stories were not. I think sometimes people put in a difficult scene or an emotionally heavy scene to almost add impact and shock factor it doesn't feel yeah. like this is doing that at all it feels like it's truly trying to explore them and that shows with just the, the range of emotions that it talks about and Definitely. interlinks and you know you've got i think one uh, of the, the the reasons that you know that is because those shocking scenes and difficult scenes and stuff usually come into play when it's characters that you know yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? Like, you know, like I said last week, there's a scene in Gears where we have to pick between two people dying, and that wouldn't be it. You know, if a game came up and just went, all right, here's two people, pick one to die in the first five seconds, you'd be like, oh, okay, fine. Does this make sense? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This, so this game because it's five to ten minute stories about people that you have no idea who they are. Apart from they're they're not, part of a family. Yeah, all you know is that you're part, they're part of the family, but you have no background behind them. The only thing you know about this person is the story that's being unfolded in front of you, sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. So it's not, it's not there for shock factor. It's literally there to tell a story, and that's it. Mm. But yeah. but it's also done. Although they're contained in themselves, there's also like, and it is quite morbid because you are basically experiencing the deaths of each of these people from yeah. the first person. The point final moment. The final moment. That's a better way to put yeah. it. Yeah. But it's not just that depending on when that happens chronologically as you go back to playing as Edith or reading the diary of Edith and exploring the the overworld the house again you can see the impact that that death has had on the people around them as well yeah, yeah. just by the yeah, objects yeah. in the room and the little shrines that they've built and it really yeah it's really like um quite powerful thought actually provo- i think it's thought provoking i feel like we spoke about it for ages afterwards when yeah. we finished it i remember we called you and we were talking about it for a good like hour i was dying <laughs> for you guys to play that it, was, it just came out of nowhere for me i didn't really know anything about it i just picked it up because yeah, it was relatively really cheap and I, again i wanted to have a game on my switch that scratched a different type of itch and mm. that rhymes and walking <laughs> simulator wasn't really one that i had so gave it a go and it just blew me away at the end of it i had the goosebumps all the way up my body and all my hairs are standing on end and it's such a powerful powerful game yeah, um, did, did we end up looking up how long it took for them to make it was it like five years or something it was a long time it might oh, have been even longer than that you know? didn't the developers yeah. also make um, a game that I haven't played but I've heard remarkable things about which was a BAFTA winning game called The Unfinished Swan oh yeah I've heard amazing things so about I think well. the large portion of the developers or directors on that game uh, went independent to make this game 
um, and apparently that oh. translates pretty well. Uh, yeah, so I'm glad you guys enjoyed it and got as much out of it as I did. There were some, yeah, as Ben said, there were some moments in that game that will stick with me for a long, long time. We're glad yeah. you recommended it. Yeah, definitely. Well, you bought it for us, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I kind of forced Thanks. you to play it. I was like, I've paid for this now. You have no choice. You have to play. Yeah, no, I'm glad you did. It was amazing. Let um, me know as soon as you have, please. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I'd definitely recommend it to people. It's not that expensive PC, I don't think, is it? No, it's quite... no you, can, yeah, you so... can get it up pretty cheap. And as I say, it's cheaper than like the price of a cinema ticket. And I think it does. Anyone can play More it. Than a you lot don't of even have to do be a days. gamer. You don't have to know how to play video games. No, you definitely not. It. It's just follow the dotted line the there's not really a dotted line but the... i mean ben was pressing all the buttons of which i don't know how many you actually have to press but i was just what there well that's another side of it is how there's no tutorial and the controls just make sense yeah yeah, yeah. but i was just watching it like a movie yeah and it was there, there were bits gripping. that you guys played that i didn't even get to experience i had no idea that was even possible yeah i don't know how you missed them <laughs> i have no idea it, it's making me want to go and play it again now so. I might play it again at some point. Or we might play I it think, again yeah, point. maybe give it some time. A while, yeah, yeah. give it a while give so it's a bit more fresh. <laughs> yeah. Or play it with other people so you can see yeah. their response or something. Yeah, good idea. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, right. That's that. what remains of Ida Finch. Play it. Thank it's you for amazing. talking about that with us, Charlotte. Um, yeah, that was fun. It's yeah. my pleasure. Um, super brief special mm-hmm. guest, Charlotte. <laughs> again. <laughs> again. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's replacing me it seems. come back next so, week for sure no, she's, she's slowly replacing you next week she'll be on for half of I, it the week I, after three quarters and then I can't replace Dan he's irreplaceable Aww. Aww, she's so sweet, sweet isn't she yeah. I just um, tell the truth <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think next time you'll be on we'll probably be talking about Luigi's Mansion yeah or Mario but everyone's played Mario oh okay we won't talk about that at all then <laughs> fine <laughs> uh, yeah Luigi's Mansion then I guess get wrecked uh, sweet as alright Charlotte Bye. Oh, you're just sending her off. She can't even stay for the end. Sorry, Charlotte. You know. Oh, this is the end, isn't it? <laughs> like, I'll wanna, just leave now. Did you want to stay for the end? I don't. I mean, I don't mind. All right, you can. I mean, yeah, just stay. Just stay. Come oh, off. thanks, guys. We're all a family. Just don't interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> just don't you interrupt. Won't, you won't even know oh, I'm here. <laughs> Keep it quiet, Ben. Such a I loving husband. Like a dick, <laughs> <I>? <laughs> um, right, so this is the section where I think I've had to do this for three weeks now. Is where we would normally say we're entering spoiler heavy zone. Um, I'm sorry, but guys, what's been going on? So uh, uh, we're gonna change. We, that, ben, 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 Kevin. <laughs> spoiler. You, you might. <laughs> this is my bit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> say territorial. Yes, yes I am. Um, so, we would normally be talking about our game of the week, which was, for the last three weeks, supposed to be <laughs> Evil Within. How are you getting on with it, Dan? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> He's been busy, right? <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> Guys, I have... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. He's lost I'm love. Sorry. I genuinely wanted to play it, and I did play it, a bit for a few hours. <laughs> uh, I don't know how many hours I got into it. Maybe like six or seven or something. So I played a fair bit, but the the idea was that I was supposed to complete it, um, and I just I literally have not had the the time or mental capacity to sit down and play a survival horror game. To be honest, in the last couple of weeks with excuses and moving house and everything else. I so. think with life circumstances, it's understandable. Yeah, life, life got just, in the way. I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. but this is one of the reasons that you're going to be replacing Dan, Charlotte. You expect so, me um, to play a game? Yeah, it's only, it's, only, three weeks. it's only like twenty hours long, Charlotte. Surely you can find twenty hours in the next few weeks to, to play I a game. It you have no it would idea literally how take much me time three weeks Charlotte spends on things like this okay. to like just work out how to control things. I just, I just find it convenient that you know we were just talking about Borderlands Three, which Dan has completed, and it's uh, playtime. If you just play the main story, is twenty five to thirty hours. Yeah, so. but I don't have to like think when I'm playing it. Whereas a survival horror experience is a very different thing. I have to be like immersed it in just, what's going on, just... and I have to be engaged with the horror aspects of it. Otherwise, I'm just like playing a weird platformer game with creepy looking dudes what? running about. <laughs> <Platformer. like it's... laughs> And has to remember also he can talk about it here. No, I mean, no. I feel like that's a lot of questions. Okay, Charlotte, you can leave now. Um, <laughs> wow. Right. I'm glad someone's I love on you, my Dan. Side. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
it just it just just shows your lack of dedication. Okay. What do you mean? And, um, we're gonna have to I'm work so on hurt. this. I'm so hard. All right. I've all, I'm, so, all, I'm just the thing is right. I'll tell you what it is. I am now completely demoralized to play that game ever again, because okay. for the last three weeks or more, all I've heard from you, Ben, is have you played it yet? Have you played it yet, Ben? When, when are you going to play it? Are you going to play it tonight? You should play it tonight. Maybe you should play it tomorrow. I'm like, I, the last game that I want to play right now is this bloody Evil Within game. Like, Ben, you're such a nag. Yeah, <laughs> just, it really it's just my dedication off. to really the show, you know. So, but I'm what I played of it was pretty good. It has dated a bit. Um, the characters, the voice acting, the stories all pretty good the gameplay mechanics I think are pretty mediocre to be honest, I think they're just more yeah, they're the pretty same. solid standard Resident Evil mechanics yeah. Really, I, I would, yeah, yeah, in fact probably a bit more interesting than Resident yeah. Evil series, just because there's a bit more of this um, you know, laundering hulks when they're chasing you down and you're like bouncing off walls and proper sprinting for your life and you've got a limp and yeah there yeah. are some there are some really tense moments um again i don't think it's aged that well it runs okay on pc but not brilliantly um yeah i don't know what i played of it didn't stick out that much what i really liked was the more supernatural twist on the zombie-ish genre i guess like You've got the butcher type dudes and the zombies and the weird possessed people and all those kind of demony dudes, but you've also got these weird moments where you're like warping between environments, like you're going through mirrors and you've got these yeah, strange that, I, spirit I love stuff, realm yeah. type things. Mm. Um, I thought that was all really interesting. Uh, you guys, I think we spoke about it before actually. The the key systems called like the collectibles, looking out for little statues and then opening a random box. It's loot boxes done right, if you ask me. Um, yeah, and the upgrade mechanics are pretty cool. Combat's okay. I like being able to use traps. Uh, yeah, the traps are cool. Atmosphere's pretty good. Like, In fact, the atmosphere's really good. Um, the lighting and everything else was done really, really well. But, I don't know. I just, I just feel like I got a bit bored after a while of sneaking around, disarming bear traps and other traps. Um... <laughs> And Can you guys see my cat purring? Not really. Okay. Yeah. It's went right up to the mic, just going. Oh. <laughs> it's because he agrees with everything that I'm saying, obviously. Dan, you are wrong here. So this, this. Uh... Eh, it wasn't that amazing. I thought it was alright. But then I haven't finished it. Okay. Ben, hold your lip, right? I've played it. seventeen and a half thousand hours of it. So like. It's... But, uh, ben, I mean, you, ma you managed to play thirty hours or more of Borderlands. Yeah, so. because I don't Sometimes. have to think to play Borderlands. No, I don't care. Sometimes Ben, you have I to don't let care go. what your excuse is, Daniel. Okay, <laughs> all, I, all I'm saying is you can't say that Evil Within oh it's seventeen and a half thousand hours when it's like half the play length of the game that you just bloody completed. Yeah, but have you ever like? <laughs> firstly, have you ever been forced to play a game that you don't feel like playing? Because that's not fun. Yes. <laughs> Sit down and play it. <laughs> but yeah, I, t I did the first bloody week. Yeah, what what was your game? So Hellblade. Hellblade. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. It's kind of a long game, I guess. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I mean it was just yeah. I think if I didn't know how long it was, maybe I would have continued a bit longer until I got bored and decided to look up how long it was. But it was finding out how long the game was that put me off wanting to play all of it in a limited period of time I don't know I don't think I'm ever going to go back to it <laughs> so he just got really bored oh of it basically <laughs> I told you what I liked and I told you what I didn't like alright Charlotte you're a host now oh, no <laughs> it's alright Charlotte you can have my saying. job they'll force you to play games instead I'd be rubbish at it yeah, yeah Charlotte might actually put in the grind you know I did. I, I gave you seven to eight hours, or okay, maybe like six to five to six. <laughs> oh dear. Dan, what chapter did you get up to? Uh, like three or four hours in, I guess. So hold Wait, on. So, so you've gone, gone from, from seven to eight, seven to, eight hours. to five to six <laughs> to three to four. Did you even, Did you even buy the game? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> um, I would load up my Steam, but I've got an update and I can't tell you. Sorry. You know what? It's over now. It's fine. I don't know how many hours I put it's, in. It's, uh, you know what, Ben? Ben, just give, give people the, the updated news on what's Hold going on. Hold on, Dan. Have you seen the, the, the spider lady yet? Spider lady? Yeah. Oh, the thing that like bursts out of a corpse and chases you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right before the bit on the spiral staircase. And that's pretty much where you got to? Me, yeah. Right, so you got to chapter 4 out of 15. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so that took ages. That took like two hours. There, d- sorry, four to three hours, and now it's two hours. No, I think genuinely it was like four to six hours of gameplay. He's putting numbers at his arse now. So, <laughs> if pe- so, obviously, the idea of this thing was for people to listen, you know, maybe get an idea of maybe whether they want to play the game or whatever. Don't listen to Dan because <laughs> even he's played, you know. One maybe to I nine like hours of this game. Kind of so, games. one to nine. <laughs> God knows how long he's played. He's on chapter four out of fifteen. So they're obviously he's got no leg to stand. No, they're not. It's just oh, whatever. They're long. They are quite long chapters. All right. So Dan is wrong. Um, no, move no, on no, with your lives, no, everyone. No, 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 no. It's not uh, as simple. Yeah, 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 It's yeah, not yeah. as simple as that. No, no, no. Yes, it is. It felt, Binary. it felt like a Dan good game, well. but I was busy. I was moving house. Life got in the way. And when you're busy, I think the, what I learned from this <laughs> is when my life is hectic and I've got other stuff going on, the last thing I want to do at the end of the day is sit down with a controller in my hands and play a survival horror game. Like, I feel like. Like, that's the first thing I want to do. <laughs> be intense on the edge of your seat all the time and like conserving ammo. No, I want to play yeah, a game man. where I've got four million shots and I can just hold down the trigger button and look out the window whilst I'm playing. Like it's... <laughs> Are you okay, Dan? You're playing life. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Driving basically Dan outside. was not in the mood to play the game. So the whole purpose of this this Game of the Week thing was to give people, you know, give each other a game that we love for them to experience it and um dan didn't even try because he wasn't in the mood because he wanted more bullets in his gun so I tried. moving on i did try you can't say i didn't try i put like you eight, eight hours four. into this game i put so many hours dan, in a minute ago you oh said two God, hours. This, is, this is an argument it's not just being i know it's because yeah. dan is being no idiot. you're being annoying Stop. no you're both <laughs> being the same as each other Whatever. It's brothers, man. Give them the news, man. Yeah, I know. Right, God, so we are it. now it's scrapping a Game of the Week. Oh, we so had now you're telling me I killed an entire section of the podcast. Yep. Great. Um, <laughs> now I feel great. I'm fantastic. Leaving. Good. That's dark. like exactly how, Dan, if you think, think it, close your eyes and think about how you're Be feeling quiet. right now. Uh, that is how you should stop. feel. Right. So, Game of the Week is now gone. Okay. Right. We've taken three weeks off and it's gone. It's now dead in a ditch somewhere. <laughs> um,. So, <laughs> what we're going to be doing now is... Uh, exciting. Yeah, oh, you, Charlotte doesn't even know I don't about know this. about this. Um, so we get a live reaction, guys. <laughs> we're okay. going to be bum, doing bum, bum. a game of the month. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds no different and to in, Game of the Week, does it? Um, in two months' time, we're going to do Game of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, what we're going to be doing is all three of us are going to decide for the for the first month. We're going to decide on a game. We are going to play said game for the month of November, and then at the end of the month, we're going to put out a special podcast, like a deep dive podcast into that game. So all three of you play the same all game. All three of us play the same game, so we can't listen to any of Dan's bull crap excuses. Benjamin, because um, we all have to go through the same thing, so no excuses. That's quite cool. Yeah. So we're. You have to take proper notes while you're playing. Yeah, yeah. Well, Kevin won't be doing that, but um, <laughs> so <laughs> true. Yeah. And then in the new Smart year, life. what we're going to be doing is doing it as per a poll. So we're going to put out a poll of all the games, the op game options, and then and the first to get to the top of the poll wins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> that took been a while. The oh, answer, Kevin, right now. That was brilliant, but. Um, yeah, so we we'll put out a poll and then people have to pick and then that's the game we'll play for that month. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds like an exciting idea. Yeah. And what's the game this month? Yeah! Woo! Uh, go on, Dan. Evil Within. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm still better then. One day then. I'll play it one day and surprise you. I'll come out, no, you come out of the woodwork won't. and be like, Ben, I completed Evil V, and you'll be like, what? I... Oh my god. I oh, thought if, we'd if I could right now, I'd burn this game. Burn what? Could we just... He's going to burn the game. Oh. Did he just burn the game? What happened? What? I want to burn the game because you keep talking about it and keep going back to this point. Just get to the main I'm point. I'm waiting for Dan to say it. He's the one who joked about it. Oh, sorry. The The game of the year is... No, no the game no. of the month <laughs> is uh, Outer Worlds. Yeah. Ben's, is that the one Ben's, you're saying? Yeah, Ben's already got a head start. He's already started playing it. He's really enjoying it, though. Yeah. Good. I've heard great things about it, too. He keeps rushing off because he's like, I need to play my game. <laughs> It's yeah. for the podcast. It's for the, well, it's now, work, Charlotte. It's work. It will be. <laughs> um, yeah, Quality so time no longer happens. <laughs> so we're all going to play it, and then at the end of the month, we're going to do a separate special podcast. Um, no idea what we're going to call it. Kev, name it now. Uh, Kevin's rage moment. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're we're going to call it um, Moonlight. That game. Ooh. I don't know why, what? but that's what we're going to call it from what? now on. Uh... That's terrible. What? Moonlight of the month. Uh... Time to do with moonlights, okay? What are you talking about? Why moonlight? I don't know. We're very long into this, man. <laughs> <laughs> We've been talking right. about just nonsense wait, wait, for the wait, past wait, wait, god knows how didn't long. Didn't he have like moons on his bed sheet or something? And that's where he's... There I do. I literally have it. Don't, don't ask me why uh... I know what his bed sheets look like. So that's a long story. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Alright, anyway, that's it, we're done. Okay. This that's the end of the podcast. So end of the month we'll do an Outer World special, okay? Um oh, Dan sucks. Let's It's actually let's the it. first of the month as well, isn't it? So this is like perfect timing. Yeah. Mm. So Good timing. Dan will download it over the week and then start next week. <laughs> um <laughs> Right, anyway, this is the end. This is the end of the podcast. So, Kevin. If people, until next week, right? Until next week. <laughs> if people want to love us and show our appreciation and uh, tell us how amazing we are at podcasting, how amazing our half an hour end was for this game, how wrong Dan is about Evil Within, how oh lovely God. Charlotte is at, at, at podcasting, um, or how, how rubbish Kevin is at describing Bioshock, how would they do it, Kev? Um... You can tell us how happy you are to have Dan back on Twitter at Praise the Pickle. You can tell us how excited you are for Charlotte's little entrances um, at Praise the Pickle Podcast at gmail dot com. Or you can tell Ben how great of a host he is at uh, on Facebook at facebook dot com slash Praise the Pickle. Kevin. That's it, boys. No, it's not it. No, Kevin, you can't say you can't say you can say this, this, and that at Praise the Pickle. You have to say on Twitter we are at Praise the Pickle. You don't just say at Praise the Pickle. That could be a place. Oh. <laughs> that could be a website. That could be. <laughs> you... Wait, wait, wait! Did I not have to go to Praise yeah, the Pickle? You don't say you go to, go. You don't say say this at Praise uh, the Pickle. What, uh, guys, say on Twitter. You can... Everyone, I'm sorry. These, swear, these, these people understand what I'm court, talking right. about. So right, I'm, I'm done. I'm done with all of you guys. Yes, that is morning coffee. Done. This podcast started so well, right? And then Dan just ruined it. You ruined okay. it, Charlotte. You ruined replace it. me. I don't yes. want this job anymore. <laughs> I just could not be able to do a good a job as you do, Dan. Lies. All right, everyone. Well, at least you'd actually you're actually play the games given. Oh. Right. Um, ben just needs to stop being so bitter. I'm yeah, really ben. sorry. I'll talk to him later. You can go yeah, now, talk Charlotte. to Ben. Right. Look, Right. Oh, well. Goodbye, everyone. Love, love you all, everyone. Bye. Good night. Bye. Um, pray, pray, pickle. Pickle, 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 bitch. What was that? That's the ending of the show. Pickle, <laughs> Who did that? Who said that? That, that was Kevin. Kevin. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that was so good.